water, earth, fire, air. The four nations lived in harmony, and everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. With Avatar Roku gone and the new Avatar missing, those who oppose the tyrannical rule of Fire Lord Sozin and his son Azulon have banded together to form a resistance and fight back to slow the surging flames of war that will overwhelm everyone. Four young rebels, though inexperienced and with much still to learn, may just be the ones who can protect the world. Welcome everybody to Avatar Legends, a brand new tabletop role-playing game by Magpie Games, who have very kindly sponsored us, High Rollers D&D, to bring you a special two-part adventure uh, to kind of celebrate it and announce the, the Kickstarter that's coming soon. More on that in just a second. Um, and yeah, share this awesome tabletop role-playing game set in one of the best fantasy animated series of all time. I'm Mark Humes, uh, the Dungeon Master, also known as Sherlock Humes. I'm going to be your Games Master or Dungeon Master, whatever you want to call it, uh, for this session. And I'm joined by my wonderful friends. Da, 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 da. We're doing we're it! Into, we're, we're playing we're it. it! He's so excited, my boy. Ah, He's so happy. I can't believe they're uh, letting us write Season 3. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so, Matt, no, that's not right. Huh? No, no you read believe. it wrong. Let him believe, Troll. Yeah, yeah. Season that's 3. Amazing. I can't wait. Yeah, um, yeah, it's the, happening. The animation, I guess, get to see Let it. Let me oh, quickly yeah. run through everyone's names. If you are a brand new viewer, maybe you've not watched any high roller stuff before. Let's be honest, you probably have. Uh, <laughs> there's most people there, but we have Rhiannon, Tom, hello, Katie, Trot, and Kim uh, joining us. And yeah, we are the High Rollers D and D crew. We do live D and D here on Twitch and on YouTube podcast as well. Um, and yeah, we've been brought together uh, and and sponsored by Magpie Games to play Avatar Legends, which we're, as you can see, I see very very excited about. Um, we're going to go into like all the character stuff and kind of set up the adventure for the game in just a minute. But there is a couple of things I want to talk to you a little bit about. Avatar Legends. Uh, Avatar Legends is an officially licensed tabletop role-playing game based on the world of Avatar, The Last Airbender, and The Legend of Korra. Players get to create their own elemental bender, weapon specialist, or technologist in any of the five eras uh, that if you know your Avatar, you know that uh, there are all these different cool eras that you can go and explore. It's an easy-to-access custom system created by an award-winning designer to help you tell stories in the Avatar-verse, uh, even if you are somebody who is not familiar with tabletop role-playing games. Uh, and also, this is something from those guys, uh, as a minority-owned company, Magpie Games knows the importance of getting diversity right in RPGs. They brought on Asian American and Indigenous designers as core contributors to the Avatar Legends RPG. Uh, so, you know, the Kickstarter goes live at 10 a.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. UK time on Tuesday, August 3rd. Uh, 3rd. That's next Tuesday, I believe. Uh, check the Kickstarter link and make sure you follow the project to get email updates when it's live. They've already unlocked two pre-launch stretch goals, a cool dice set and a cloth map, and they're currently working on unlocking a deck of combat cards. Um, but also, and this is probably the most exciting thing, especially with stuff like Kickstarters, right now you can go and download the quick start rules. Um, there's a custom link in chat, in the video description, in the podcast description. You can go and download the quick start rules for the game, which is what we're going to be using to learn how to play and actually sit down and play this game yourself and you can download those for free just have to sign up for the newsletter and stuff like that so go and check that out um bam wonderful yep, yep. oh yep yep there he goes <laughs> where where have you gone um amazing amazing chris trot just getting a little bit bored there um no <laughs> <laughs> Who else could have done it, Chris Trot? Not bored. <laughs> I'm enhancing. I'm enhancing. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we are going to play this awesome game. So this is obviously very different to Dungeons & Dragons, which a lot mm -hmm. of you who are watching this probably know us from. You probably play that game. This is a very different system, um, and we have learned a little bit about it. We've actually sat down with designers, um, Mark from Magpie Games, and we've you know gone through it ourselves. But this is going to be one of our first times really properly playing it in a full session together. So we're going to be learning the game. We're going to be teaching you guys the game as we go. The mechanics and the tone of the game is also very different to D and D. Um, this isn't a case of you know fighting is the solution to everything. The way that skills work, there's a lot more sort of interplayer stuff, and also as a GM, I. I'm a lot more hands-off in this game i in fact one thing and the players will be excited to hear this i never roll dice so you cannot ever oh. blame 
my luck for your failures now. <laughs> the day is ours. The day is ours, <laughs> brothers and sisters. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, perfect. Amazing. All right. Uh, any anything from you guys? Anything you guys want to say? Or anything you know? Any questions before we fully get started? Yeah, Tom um, does. Yeah, I have quite a few questions actually. Number one. Um, when does the animation come through and when do we get to approve it? Number two, when is yep. it uh, going live? And number three, yep. this is a collaborative storytelling game, correct? It is. Well, uh, was that to the first one? The anime? It is? <laughs> the answer oh. is yes. Oh. The answer, I'm just going to say the answer is yes. And then nice. he can decide what he wants that to be an answer to in his delusion. When's um, it coming out? Yes. When's it coming out? <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, let's set some things up. Those of you who uh, know the Avatar universe, this is taking place uh, during the Hundred Year War. And it should be noted as well, part of when you sit down to play Avatar Legends, you decide this stuff as a group. So this wasn't me coming up with a story necessarily. This was we, I actually sent around a, 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 a poll form to everyone and everyone voted on what they would like it to be. Um, and uh, you pick a time period. In this case, we are playing during the Hundred Year War. So this is the time period before the Avatar The Last Airbender show kicks off. Before Aang is found, this is the war that happens leading up to that moment. So it's very, very exciting. Uh, and we also picked a scope, uh, which is going to, we're going to be taking our adventure, kind of hopping between a few different locations. We're going to see a little bit about the world, but it's not the whole world. We're going to be focused on a couple of smaller locations. Um, and then the, the next thing we had to do is come up with the inciting incident, which is an actual thing that has happened, kind of like a session zero that you might get in other role-playing games where we've set up the kind of situation and the players have already done stuff. We didn't roll dice or anything for it, but stuff has already happened. Um, in this case, you are all young members of a rebel cell, a, a resistance that's being built up throughout the Earth Kingdom, throughout the Water Tribes, uh, to oppose the invading Fire Nation. It's been sort of 30-odd years since the war began. Um, the Fire Nation has already got a strong foothold in a lot of places, and there's no Avatar to stop them, and there's no, you know, the armies aren't prepared for it, they weren't prepared for this invasion, so they are on the back foot. And so what we're seeing, what we're seeing is in lots of villages and remote places, resistances, rebel cells have, have built up to kind of oppose the Fire Nation advance. You four in particular work in a place called Merchant's Pier, which is on the coast of the, uh, the Earth Kingdom. And for whatever reason, however you got there, that's up to you. Um, but you've been working in this place for a while. You have a cell leader called Song, uh, who is kind of your administrator and organizer and things like that. But you guys are the fighters in all this. Like, even though you're young, you are the ones that Song sends out to kind of accomplish missions, disrupt supply chains, uh, rescue prisoners, all of this kind of stuff. And you guys, in your inciting incident that we kind of worked through together, you guys discovered that they, a fearsome foe had a terrifying plan. And in this case, it is that an admiral, a Fire Nation admiral, Admiral Carr, has sent a force of special firebenders armed with the latest technology to Mount Makapu, which is a volcano in the Earth Kingdom. And their goal is to set the volcano off to cause it to erupt, which will have two, two effects. One, it will destroy the villages and Earth, uh, Earth Kingdom resistance hideouts in those mountains. And two, it will empower firebenders in the area. It will make their attacking the Earth Kingdom even better as the, the radiant heat and all the ash spreads everywhere, making them much more powerful. And you discovered this plot by Admiral Carr, who's known as a kind of cunning tactical genius um and you decided to do something about it what you did uh, as part of the inciting incident is you snuck into the fire nation docks in merchant's pier and you destroyed several of the ships in some of the technology that was going to go to set the volcano off however you were caught a, a fight broke out um, and an earthbender mercenary called the onyx juggernaut was sent in and stopped you being able to finish the job and you had a big fight with the onyx juggernaut you had to flee um, the Onyx Juggernaut is still alive, he's still out there somewhere, uh, and that is pretty much where our adventure is going to begin. Uh, with you guys, the fire, the explosions coming from the docks, the, the specific Fire Nation docks in Merchant's Pier kind of light up the night sky around you, right? We see it kind of silhouetted, you guys all hunched together in an alleyway, tucked between stores and, and apartment buildings. 
as you see all this like orange glow fill the night sky from the explosions and the fire you can hear military shouts you can hear all of this commotion going on around you it's not just the fire nation that's annoyed that their plans have been disrupted but also the pirates who run merchants pier it's kind of like a black uh, black market trade hub um which is led by a uh, a particularly nasty pirate called uh princess peony um they are also looking after you uh they're looking for you as well so there's all these shouts like oh where are they all this commotion going on but you guys have that's where we're going to begin you guys have destroyed this thing you've had a fight and now you're kind of catching your breath um at this point let's introduce your characters let's kind of describe them as part of that scene so like there's an alleyway you've just done all this stuff let's get like what your character looks like maybe what they're doing in that moment um as all of this stuff is happening i'm going to start with him because i know he's so excited it's going to start with tom hazel cool i uh am immediately looking over a crate or barrel or something at all of these explosions going off and i'm like that is much louder than I'd hoped it would be. Uh, they're going to be all over us. Um, and I am playing uh, Baya, a Kyoshi warrior, uh, a female character. Um, and I have got the white face paint, the red eyes, and the black sort of lipstick and stuff. Uh, I have two fans as a weapon. And I'm kind of looking in awe and also like watching fireworks at these things blowing up in the distance. Um, it's exciting, right? This is, you know, this is an exciting cool. thing, something you never would have potentially seen on Kyoshi Island. So, yeah. No, exactly. Um, but also, it's much bigger than we'd expected. <laughs> it was meant to be kind of more silent than this, <laughs> but they're okay. going up. Um, okay. And that's kind so of what I'm why, doing. So here's a question for you, Tom. Why is the explosion bigger than you expected? You've, you've inserted that detail into this scenario. Is that is that something you did, or is this something that your your firebender companion potentially was involved with? Because I might make this uh, a roll I was gonna later say, on in a second. Maybe could we, I uh, answer this? Yeah, if, if, if like, you want to yeah. jump sure. in on that. Yeah, or in that hmm. case, Kim, take it away. Yeah. So um, my character will kind of shrug um, and was watching the show and just reply and say. Well, you did say you wanted a show, and darling, I had to give you theatrics. Um, I am playing Mei Li, and she is a firebender, and she is actually um, part of a, an opera troupe. Uh, a kind of, if you imagine the opera troupes in Avatar, are very much based on Chinese opera, um, and so she is dressed very fam buoyantly in uh, red uh, robes with kind of blue trim and um, beautiful kind of designs um, uh, tailored into it and embroidered into it. Um, she's also got a little bit of makeup, not as much as Baya the Kyoshi Warrior, kind of that, uh, again, that theatrical opera makeup of like a pale white with um, the p heavy pink eyeshadow and then kind mm. of dark brows and all that. Um, and so the two of you um, almost, yeah, is wearing, there's a kind of... Yeah similar vibe right, because like the Kyoshi warrior all in this makeup but then the armor and the fans but you're more of an actual theatrical kind of yeah. look to it and then yeah we see the yeah. crown as well it's more cloth well. yeah mm. yeah and um i'm wearing a, a headdress which is um the traditional kind of uh crown the guan uh crown um which mm. is very um elaborate kind of pale blue um lots of kind of ornaments almost like jangling a little bit on it mm. um and i'd like to say i'd, I'd like to say that the reason may lee on a kind of uh, what should be maybe a, a, a stealth operation is wearing this elaborate outfit is because perhaps we used a bit of um, theatrics to get in. Like maybe Mei Li was performing to distract guards sure. um, and then yeah. used her firebending to blow up, you know, some of these firework mm -hmm. barrels and set off the explosions because, you know, yeah. you wanted a show, I, you got a show. Exactly. I think that Mei Li would have, um, you know, knowing being a fire citizen yourself and you are, you know, you are right, you are rebelling against your own nation here at this point but you know that their ships um have lots of fuel storages like coal but also if they're transporting these explosives to this volcano then yeah it just needed a spark to kind of set them off early and, and that's kind of caused this um we're going to come back to you guys because we're going to have some roles because i kind of want to use this as an opportunity to test out the system in just a minute but i want to finish introducing everybody first sure, so we yeah. see 
melee kind of responding to to Byers. Byers looking over the crates, kind of maybe peering over a roof, right? Like Byers kind of climbed up and is looking over to kind of check and see what's happening. Who what who who's next? Who wants to kind of go follow up, follow this up after melee's kind of uh, you know? Well, you wanted theatrics. All right, Reng. Reng is a relatively simple clothed uh, male, young. Uh, he's got tied back dark brown hair with shaved sides and emerald green eyes. And he's just very youthful, very athletic looking. He's got cut off sleeves and you can kind of see a bit of definition in his arms. He's holding mm-hmm. a big spear. Um, okay. And he is hovering around Baya because he's from Kyoshi. He's Baya's best friend. He's not a Kyoshi warrior, but he's from the same area and they've grown up together. Mm. And he is pacing back and forth, looking at the explosion, turning around, walking back, making noises like, nah, this is a terrible idea. I don't know why we're here, Baya. We should go home. Uh, I told you we shouldn't have got into the, any of this mess. <sighs> we try and help people, and this is what happens. Okay. And that's what I'm doing. Interesting. Okay, so <clears throat> with Reng then, so as part of this operation to sneak into these docks and to destroy these explosives and this technology and, and things like that, and then you had this big fight, what what would you think Reng would have been doing as part of that? Because it's clear that Reng doesn't want to be here. Would Reng just have been protecting Bayer like in the fight, or or would would you is there some sort of like element that you think Reng would have contributed to this this stealth mission, this this uh, disruptive this sabotage? Well, he's military trained, so okay. much like. Not to the level of a Kyoshi warrior, however, he's he's trained from the same warrior, area. Yeah. Um, he would be playing defensively, making sure Bayer is safe and defending okay. the interests of everyone around, you know, deflecting stuff, not sure. being aggressive. Maybe, like, keeping a lookout then, like, as they're sneaking onto the ships, like, your job was to kind of keep a lookout and then, if something went bad, come in and warn them or something like that, maybe? As, and, then, and then when the fight kicked off, you were going into defensive mode then at that point. Cool. Well, on right. your character sheet, you can choose some demeanors by mm. default. I'm sure you can add your own. But I've picked suspicious and cautious. That's very <laughs> much what I am. And that will come in with some of your special moves that you can do later, I believe, as well. All Absolutely. very built around that. Um, cool. So we've kind of got these two clear, like, military-trained sabotages. We have this thespian. Whilst Reng is pacing and worrying about all of that, um, there's two more figures. Should we do... Who wants to go first? Katie or Ree? Who wants to go? I can go next. I don't mind. All right, Ree, take it away. So so we see these guys, but there's still two more figures. What, what do we see okay. Dawa doing? And describe Dawa. So- Dawa is looking at the scene in abject horror. Like, <laughs> okay. this is horrendous. Um, Dawa is an airbender, so she's wearing the very sort of traditional orange and yellow monk robes with the little cape around the shoulders. Uh, uh-huh. She has a very pale, almost white eyes with the airbender tattoos on her forehead visible on her hands as well. But mm-hmm. she has the signs of what was once a shaved like forehead but it's kind Mm -hmm. of grown back into this like shaggy, almost kind of mullet because she hasn't (laughs) been keeping up with it in a while. Sure, uh, yeah. It's kind of hiding a little bit of the the head arrow almost. Yeah. And she looks over at Mei and is like, was all of that completely necessary? Um, It's not just the ships we could have burnt down, but the shops as well. The the pirate, the merchants, what are they going to do? Oh my goodness. We've made such a trouble for ourselves. <laughs> okay. So we also, like, with maybe with Reng then, like, as Reng is panicking about all of this, we see Dawa kind of nervously doing the same thing, kind of worrying about all of this I'm collateral up her damage. Points and then getting more mm-hmm. worried about these extra points that Dawa's bringing up. It's like, yeah, yeah, the markets, they could be dead. <laughs> they could be coming at us right now. We need to go. <laughs> So we see this kind of like panic thing. So again, Dawa, I guess like if, if you know, what was your, you being part of this mission, you know, mm. what do you think Dawa would have been doing? Like sneaking on board to kind of disable these ships, like, and then eventually having a fight. What do you think your kind of like involvement with that would have been? I think Dawa would have come, come into it with a more like defensive standpoint. Like she would have been there to help, help protect friends if anything went wrong. Okay. Um, yeah, so she was more kind of coming in to, like, help. Um, mm. 
yeah, maybe like using like airbending to like manipulate some of the things like moving you know the crates or stuff like that like, well. yeah, yeah stuff like that like being disruptive Perfect. yeah but not violent in the same way no. that like melee exploding things was or like by yeah. punching and kicking dudes was yeah <laughs> or, like, cool tripping people um, up and yeah being a nuisance. All right, so we currently have two people who are very excited and invested with these these chaotic actions that they've done. We then have two warriors kind of pacing back and forth in this alley. And then I think probably the the big... I, I imagine that Kia, uh, Kehina would be the bigger... Uh, like, maybe the same sort of size as Ring. Like, she's she's a tough girl, right? Like, Kehina, Katie? Kehina, she's... she's um. She's quite athletic, but I, I don't think she's like big. She's um okay, she's quite well -built. like athletic and um mm. so um Kahina will probably say, No no, the Fire Nation probably brought that on themselves, but yeah, I do agree slightly that you could have kept that to the stage, my dear. And um she's probably um she's uh she's a waterbender, so yep. she's uh she's got long um, white blonde hair that is in two fishtail braids that are go down to about her waist. Um, she's in a sort of a sleeveless tunic that sort of splits at the waist to um, and goes down a bit. But she's got sort of harem style pants for movement underneath. Um, very blue vibes, like Water Tribe traditional stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and then she's got like uh, long light blue arm guards on and she's sort of probably not enjoying the heat of this right now because she's from a very cold place she's from a northern water tribe and mm. she's it's, it's too hot it's too hot for her here um yeah. so she's probably probably and feeling like that a, a little bit there's a bit of a hunter kind of outfit right like a kind of you know uh, out on the yeah on the nose kind of kind of like a, a wilderness kind of eskimo type hunter she's sort of been in a cold mm. environment but here she's obviously you, adapting to a different one do you think kehenna would have been maybe kind of leading the more stealthy element of this like getting down to the docks and getting aboard to disable the, the things or do you think she would have had some other role in all of this kind of i think she probably would have tried to approach it in a more stealthy way given that she usually uses ice a lot like mm. she'll freeze water and mm -hmm. um throw like spears of it and arrows out of water and ice and that that's a lot quieter and and a stealthier approach to to right. this one so yeah you could have almost She's i can <laughs> almost see Kahina giving like a way up onto the ships by going down to the water and you like freezing a path so that you know the the, the guys could sneak underneath the boats and then climb up on top right you know doing something like that to help them kind of get around cool all right so we see this yeah. kind of scene of like you guys in the other way but because a lot of this game is all about things like your conditions and your balance. Um, every character has a thing called balance, which are two principles that are kind of intrinsic to that character's personality and their drives and things like that. And in Avatar The Legends, you can shift to one way or the other way. And if you get too far to one particular value, that can cause you to you know, have an outburst or, or act out or you know, become overwhelmed. Um, you also have conditions which can influence the way that you might get modifiers and benefits to future roles. Um, and to kind of show off how the roles work, what I think I want to do is just go around and as part of a kind of, almost, not flashback, but what you guys were doing to disable these ships and destroy this technology and then fight uh, to escape away. I kind of want everybody to just do a basic, uh, just kind of do a basic role and then we're going to see where that kind of leads to, right? So it doesn't really like the successes and, and things like that. We already know what's going to happen. We already know that you guys managed to get away. You managed to get hidden. We know you managed to destroy the boats. But this is like a cool way to kind of see how the dice rolling works and maybe also generate some interesting conditions that maybe have left you guys in, in a bit of a state. Um, so uh, we mentioned uh, with uh, Mei Lee, you were thinking of, of doing... Um, some theatrics and things to kind of get in right that was kind of you were thinking that maybe that was something you did to kind of get to the docks and get aboard the ships um right mm -hmm. so i think yeah, that would be there is a move called to me 
perfect yeah so there's a move called trick when you trick an npc and i think that that is the perfect fit so all of the moves have things like when you trick an npc when you when you assess a situation uh when you push your luck so we can use those as our triggers for what moves to make and this i think would definitely be you're trying to trick the npcs with a performance distract them keep them away from your friends um, and this role is with creativity so you roll 2d6 and then you would add uh two from your cre uh, to, to your creativity is plus two and then what we're looking for is a seven or higher a six or lower is a miss and that's when stuff i can make stuff happen uh when you fail on the dice rolls so okay. let's see what you get um Perfect. so i rolled a four uh and then plus did you two. say with creativity yep uh if it's with creativity that's a six exactly that's a six, which is technically a failure. Uh, so <laughs> this is where I, as the GM, I can do something. That, they call it GM moves in the system, but it's basically my opportunity to add a complication, to cause you, you know, to be tired or cause a condition or shift your balance um, and that sort of thing. And I think in this one, I think it's, you know, you go out to do this this wonderful performance and everything like that. But I think that in the act of it, a lot of these Fire Nation soldiers just aren't interested. They've never heard of you. They're not that particularly interested in what you're doing. And that stings, right? As a performer, you'd, you'd be a little yeah. insulted. Um, so I think like, yeah. I'd like you to mark the insecure condition uh, as insecure. that kind of wounds your pride yeah. a little bit. You still manage to distract them enough that your allies can do what they want. I'm going to give you what you were seeking to do, but the experience, the failure leaves you with this kind of stinging insecurity of like, oh, oh, if I'd been more famous or if I'd been better, they would have th they would have noticed me mm. and they, they wouldn't have um, they would have been more interested. Right uh oh, so who yeah, else had rough. an idea of like something that they were doing go on yeah i mean i'm glad you uh, got think, it because it shows that we can show how the system works i think um just to have a role maybe there was a soldier guarding the room itself that we were trying to mm -hmm. set off all these fireworks and whatever else is in this room that we were trying to set off so mm -hmm. maybe i try and do like some kind of stealthy takedown on this guy uh to get sure. into the room and take him out of the way um, you're you've got military as one of your backgrounds right you your background you have military what are your backgrounds yes. again uh yeah i've got uh, literally just military as the uh background um well i think i think for a kyoshi warrior a kind of martial arts takedown of a guard would be when you rely on your skills and training that's a hundred percent in a Kyoshi Warriors wheelhouse, I think that that for you is definitely that. Um, so when you rely on your skills and training to overcome an obstacle, exactly what it is, gain new insight or perform a familiar custom, roll with focus. So you're going to roll 2d6, Tom, and you're going to add your focus stat. Uh, oh, nice. Another plus two. Let's see what I get. Five with plus two, seven. Is it, so that is a success, but in this, a oh. seven to nine is what we call a success with cost. If you get a 10, a 10 or higher, you get everything you want and maybe more. With a seven to nine, you do it, but there's normally something with it as well. In this case, it says on a hit, you do the task, so you knock out this guard, but uh, you do it imperfectly. The GM tells you how your approach might lead to unexpected consequences. Accept those consequences or mark one fatigue. So I think with okay. this is you manage to knock out the guard, um, but you do it much loud, much much more loudly than you anticipated. And this is potentially this would have caused like a, a you know a, a reinforcements or something to go with that. Would you think that you would have allowed that to happen, or would you have marked off a of fatigue as you kind of used an extra bit of force to like silence him or something? like that i think uh i like that being the the action that accelerated our plans and potentially led everything. to it yeah sure uh, potentially yeah, I led love to the that. explosion being way bigger than it's meant to be we had to then like okay they've heard us we need to get out of here and um okay I'll, yeah i'll take that consequence yeah Okay, yeah, so so that is basically uh, what kind of led on to everything else. Um, and I think that for you, Mr. Icon, um, I'm actually going to, That's I think that's kind of shifting more because your role is to be like a protector and things like that, right? Like, um, Yeah, well, uh, kind of on the line between, you know, being a Kyoshi warrior or forsaking mm. Kyoshi wisdom and ideals. Uh, yeah, as an icon, yeah, so... I mean, 
How does that, how do does that affect me? <laughs> well, that's what I'm trying to think. I'm trying to decide because we've already marked insecure for melee. I don't want to necessarily do that again. Maybe foolish. Maybe oh, that you're foolish. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that works. Like you've done this, you've made this noise, and it's that cringing, like, ah, oh, no, I'm like an idiot. I shouldn't have done that. You know, it should have been so much easier than it was, and I somehow messed yeah. it up. Yeah, I like that. Cool. All right. So you can mark foolish then for me, please. It's in condition. Okay. Nice. So, you know, sneaking in, Melee's got you guys all in. Um, Bayer's kind of caused this uproar of thing. Uh, at this point, you know, you've you've set off fireworks. Melee's caused flame to ignite all these explosives. You're rushing out of these ships and dockyards. Uh, what do you got? So who does anybody else have an idea of what they might be doing, like in that escape or in the fight that follows it? This is all like in the past as well, so it doesn't. It's not going to affect anything too much going forward. So, Go on, uh, Rain. I have a thing as my role, the guardian, where uh -huh. I do a role before the session, and oh, I feel like this right, ties yes. in nicely with the events that have happened here, as to Perfect. how my ward is doing and how my <clears throat> connection with this ward is going. So maybe I should do that role. Let's do that publicly. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So uh, to make so it clear, just read us through it. I've got Protector's Burden because I'm a Guardian and I'm guarding Bayer and Bayer's doing reckless stuff and oh, I have to keep I track mean... of my ward. If I if we drift, I, I get a new ward and you no longer yeah. are my ward. So um, let's see. So. When, uh, when they mark a condition in front of you, mark fatigue or mark a condition. Your ward can always call on you to live up to your principle without shifting balance towards the center and they take plus one to do it. Uh, at the beginning okay. of each session, roll, taking plus one for each yes. So here's the questions for Bayer. This is for Tom to oh. answer, not for me. Right, oh. okay. For Jesus. me and okay. you. For me and you. Right, sure. Do I'm I ready. believe uh, my ward, Bayer, listens to me more often than not? Have you been listening to me in this scenario? <laughs> No. Well, just in general. This isn't just this scenario. This is like just in general, right? Recently. Like, you get to decide that right oh, now. Oh, I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I mean, I, I have a lot more uh, faith in my abilities than you necessarily do. So I think in situations like that, no. But in general, I think, yeah. Um, let's go with no. <laughs> so that's a plus one to this roll. Uh, okay. the second Wait, question. is it a plus one for each yes, or is this a no? Oh, for each yes, sorry, yes. Yeah. So this is a okay. no plus so one. So that you don't get a plus one. Have you recently protected them or helped them with a problem? I feel like I would have been involved in this situation. Uh, you can decide that, yeah. Unwillingly, but I see the greater threat at hand, and I need to help with this and not yeah. be a hindrance saying, like, we shouldn't be doing this, we just need to get... Yeah get it done like you are it, like you are it, now it, it, <laughs> yeah yeah it could be something as simple as like you know guards were kind of chasing after you as you fled these boats and you saved by a by like knocking one of them off the ship or something like that right you did something you know cool to, yeah trip to them up with my my spear. spear um yeah sounds cool so that's that's a plus one and then finally okay. the question is is there an immediate threat to your ward that you're aware of yeah so that's, that's a plus, <laughs> okay. plus two in total to this roll. So here we so go. So is it the seven that you need for every check? Or does, does that change? Let's see. Uh, so on this one, yeah, it's on a seven to nine, um, Trot gets one thing. On a 10 plus, he gets two things. Well, it's nine. So it's nine. So you get to hold one, um, it says here, Chris Trot, on your couch sheet. Do you want to read out that stuff? Yeah, so I basically get to hold one, and then I get to use this one um, in this session. So I can take a 10 plus on any move to defend or protect you, Bayer. Um, I can awesome. track you down, even if you're hidden or trying to avoid me. Sorry. Okay. Or right. I could figure out what you're up to without you even knowing. So. And and these are things you can just use at just, any point during the session. And he gets to spend them when he wants. Yeah. And I, and I get that from you. Wow. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So make a note of that. Um, but the other thing for you, Reng, is it does say as well, when you when your ward marks a condition in front of you, mark fatigue or mark a condition. So for you, when because you've seen Bayer fail at this right. you know, sneak attack um, and is now feeling pretty foolish. So for you, you get to mark, and you get to pick because it doesn't say, I. In, it, this is like your choice here, which condition you think applies. Or you can mark fatigue, which is kind of like not really hit points it's more like your energy your stress um but if it maxes out and you you start taking more conditions you could be completely knocked out of the scene 
I'm afraid. <laughs> I was going to say, make sure, you, make sure we can still see it. <laughs> I panicked so much, I scribbled. <laughs> and that maybe is why you're you're acting the way you are in, in the moment, right? In the present is like you're freaking out now. because yeah. you saw Bayer fail. And Bayer's like this amazing warrior that you've, you've known all your life. And if they can fail, oh, God, what, what, what does that mean? Uh, There's you know, only two of us up. here. We yeah. usually fight with amongst Kyoshi warriors. I yeah. don't know these people that well. Uh, all that sure. stuff's going through it. my mind. Nice. Perfect. All right. Uh, Dower, do you have an idea of what you might be doing? Like, either in, again, this escape out of the, mm. these dockyards or in the fight that happened afterwards? So I imagine, like, during the fight, um, mm. Dawa is um, is helping Bayer and Reng. If they're throwing their weapons, like their fans or their spears, Dawa's, like, channeling channels of air to help guide their throws and make sure they're true. And then... Uh, Sort of yeah. knocking guards off balance to make sure that like I love Byron that ring and like and Kiana can hit them with their attacks. Just sure. being like a really annoying interference with guards. <laughs> yeah, we're well, supporting rather than you yeah. know you're kind of supporting in that way. Um, well, that to me is definitely you know you are an airbender. You are trained in airbending, so that is relying on your skills and training. Um, so this is roll with focus. So uh, your focus is unfortunately uh, minus one. It seems. Um, yeah. like 2d6 and then your focus four Ooh. <laughs> uh oh okay, okay. wow we're really uh, showcasing well. this game now <laughs> so what I'm going to say for you <laughs> Dower is for you your whole thing is as you're the idealist that's your character mm. archetype is you're the idealist and so for you fighting is often not always you know you're kind of torn between fighting and not fighting and yeah. you're helping these allies fight, I think that this is going to be, I'm going to try and shift you towards action. Um, okay. So this is uh, this is where, I, as the GM, I can basically cause you to shift your balance. This is quite a, you know, direct, aggressive action that you're taking, helping these mm -hmm. weapons find their targets and things like that. Now, uh, yeah, this isn't an NPC, so you are just going to move your um, balance one towards action. Um, so it starts at zero zero, so at balance, um, you're actually, and that's your, called your center. Your zero zero is called your center. That's where you'll go back to if anything would cause you to move towards your center. You are going to go to minus one, plus one. So you have plus one on anything related to taking action and doing things, um, but you would have a minus one if your forgiveness would ever be can't brought into the scenario. scenario. You know, and I think for Dower especially, right. I, and you tell me if this is the case, but these are Fire Nation soldiers, right? Mm -hmm. You've heard of what happened at the Air Temples. You know yeah. that these are the people, like th this army is, are the ones that, well, maybe they've wiped out everybody you know. And so like, I think that that might, you know, that would There's definitely lead there. towards, yeah, yeah. And that would lead yeah. to action, right? Like that would definitely kind of push you to take affirmative action. Yeah. Um, Fantastic. Um, I know Katie's just having some stuff, so we'll just wait for for uh, Kiana to get back. Um, but do you guys, you guys all kind of see that and you understand that? Are there any questions about the mechanics so far, or any kind of comments or things? Because we, you know, we are learning this game as we go. So I think, yeah, no, I think it makes sense. Um, and we'll see more of the roles as we as we go. Um, but yeah, the way the balancing affects our future roles, actions, yeah. and roles, mm. and um, all these these yeah. conditions as well, like. Uh, now that I've now that I'm foolish, I've got minus two to trick and resist shifting my balance. Uh, mm. So that makes well, because it's shifting harder. Yeah. So as as a point, you know, you guys are young heroes. You aren't like grown ups. You are teenagers or younger kids. You know, probably teenagers for you guys. I imagine. Um, you know, we're more Cora ages rather than an, an Ang ages. Um, but. So that means that feeling foolish, like it means that you're more viable to listen to adults when they tell you stuff. And that's especially the case with balance. Um, so with balance, not only can, you know, I kind of enforce balance shifts on you when you fail roles, but also NPCs might try and say, hey, aren't, don't you think that you're, you're being you know, too aggressive, or don't you think you should, you know, not worry about forgiveness? You should be taking revenge and stuff like that. And when you feel foolish, you're more likely to listen to them, right? Because you're like, oh yeah, no, I'm silly. I should listen to this, what this grown up's telling me. Um, as a point, you guys, once per session, can actually call each other out on your principles as well. So if you think, actually, no, I think I'm going to call Tom out to live up to his um, idea of, of his role as a Kyoshi warrior, I'm going to try and call him out on that or call her out on that. 
But you can so, only do that once per session each. Um, so so player-wise, mm. are we all actively aware of everyone else's character sheets? Like, we can see what everyone has at any one time. Or I would hidden? say that you can you can be aware of like everything that we can see for sure, like the balance, the the conditions. You are all friends, you know. Even if you've only just met, you are all like a group of friends together. You can tell when somebody's feeling angry. You can tell yeah, when yeah, somebody's okay. feeling insecure because there are moves that you can do to specifically comfort and heal those things, right? Right. Um, so it's not. Let's like just go D and D where the HP is hidden, but you kind no, of it's, know it. it it's yeah. Not, yeah. Um, in this, you, especially the balance, you guys are allowed to know those two things, especially. Um, right, okay. Katie, we were just talking about the kind of cool stuff that was happening mm -hmm. on, and we've got um, uh, Dawa, Rianne was saying that when they were fighting, she was using her air powers mm -hmm. to try and help everybody's weapons um, and try and help them find their targets. Um, and I think for Kiena especially, because uh, this is very relevant to your character, you know, this figure that comes out of these flaming ships and explosions is this black rock covered like wearing black rock armor uh almost like darth vader coming out of the flames uh is this giant oh, no. mercenary this earthbender <laughs> mercenary and it's somebody that kiena knows this is somebody that kiena specifically uh, knows this is kiena um kihina. 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 it's like the quill, quill thing Kihina. Kihina. Quill yeah i know Kihina. This is the Onyx Juggernaut. This is somebody that you have as uh, you're the hammer, and you actually have the Onyx Juggernaut as your adversary. Um, yeah. So I imagine I've got an idea of what maybe you were doing during this fight, but you tell me what you think you were doing. She's probably quite focused on him. Let's be honest. She wants to just take <laughs> yeah. him out. I mean, like he he um, attacked her village. So mm. yeah, he he attacked her so tribe. So are you just? outright attacking would you have just outright been attacking at this point or would you have been trying to like force him to like back off or like give up or was this just like trying to fight as best you can using your using your water bending in a, in a way i think she's while she's very angry at him she's also smart enough to know that he's a very strong warrior so she's probably mm -hmm. trying to push him back initially okay like um just hold him to off. get him to keep him away from her friends mm, um sure. like because she knows yeah what he's capable of so okay, maybe a cool. little bit of that to start with just to test yeah. the waters. <laughs> waters so like maybe um, yeah, like throwing your ice spears to try and freeze the ground or like you yeah know, freeze yeah. in place that kind of thing cool i think that Quite again defensive. that's gonna be another rely yeah i think that's gonna yeah. be another rely on your skills and training so this is with focus 2d6 sure. plus your focus Da, 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 da. Oh god, my focus is not good. Oh no, I rolled a one on one of them. Uh, <laughs> it's okay, because when this is real fighting, you get to roll with something else. That's okay, because again, this is just to represent stuff that happened in the background. If this was a real fight, there's a whole different way of doing it, but we're just doing this as like quick rolls to like learn the system. Um, so yeah, this is again, it's the same, this is, this is a miss. So you're trying desperately to hold this guy off, throwing your ice spears, kind of causing these like patches of frozen ground. And he just with one foot <laughs> slams it down. It cracks all the ice, it breaks apart and he just keeps coming. And no matter what you throw at this guy, they just keep coming and keep coming and keep coming. Um, do you think what kind of effect, if you were to mark one of those conditions, what do you think that would, um, cause for Gehenna. I think Do you think that she would be afraid she, or maybe angry that she can't stop him? It's like a combo of both of those. I don't know which <laughs> one she'd more be. I think she well, what might about everyone else? be more afraid. You can whisper it to everyone else as well. I feel like she might be sure. more afraid at the moment because she feels like this is the thing that she's come to do. She's come to take him she out can't stop and him. she she can't she can't do it and that's sure. letting down her tribe so she's sure. probably getting a bit afraid that she's not capable i love it mark afraid then for me please so that's that's the very basics of how the moves work right you describe a thing that you want to do i find a move that fits and then we roll and then there's an effect either a good a bad or a very very good um 
And that's pretty much how it works. And then these conditions and your balance will get moved and shifted around and stuff like that. There is also fatigue, which again is like your energy and, and stuff like that. And you can normally spend fatigue to either activate things, to resist things, or I might just say, hey, take a fatigue because this, this failure means that you're getting tired, right? So we okay. cut back to the present. That was all the stuff that happened in, in the sort of uh, the flashback, as it were. Um, we cut to the present. You guys are crouched in this alleyway. Fires, explosions, shouts, cries going off behind you in Merchant's Pier, this black market, you know, dodgy town. Um, I will tell you this, uh, the your kind of objective is what you should be doing, uh, keeping in mind you know that these ships with the firebenders and the, and the bombs are going to this volcano, and if you don't stop them, nobody else will. There's no military here, there are no soldiers for you to turn to, it's up to you guys to stop that. But you should probably go and check in with your um, cell leader, uh, Song. And they operate in a safe house uh, out of the sunset room. Uh, is it called the sunset room? I did. Blah, 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 blah. I put my notes down here somewhere. Uh... Oh, God, where did I actually put it? Um, yeah, the Sunset House Tea, tea Room um, is like a safe house for you. That's where Song operates from. And Song's like an organizer and an administrator. Um, but you're going to need to get there in a city that mm. is hostile, city that is looking for you. Um, so I hand it over to you guys. What would you so, like to do? So I think because um, uh, Reng and Dawa are both basically panicking in this situation as a result of this, I'm going to go mm -hmm. up to Reng, hands on either side of his face and kind of smush yeah. a little bit. You know why we're here. You know what we did. We had to do that to protect this island from the Fire Nation. Dawa, and I'm going to squeeze your face too, uh, separately. <laughs> now we all need to calm down and get back to Song, okay? You know where she is. We just need to get there stealthily. And then I'm going to smush both your faces together. So calm <laughs> down, and we'll get through this, all right? That's Song. That was going to take... <laughs> I was going to take a deep breath in and st like just start moving like crates and stuff towards them because he's breathing they so heavily. Suck towards you. <laughs> now, before you guys decide how you react to this, this is a move. Tom, what Tom's trying to do here is comfort or support another person. Um, oh. So you're actually going to have to pick one of them, Tom. Um, okay. And you're going to roll with harmony on this. Uh, pick one. In that case, I will go with... Um, I'll go with Reng. I want to calm Reng down. Uh, sure. And with harmony, I've got a plus one, so two d six, plus one, plus oh, five. Fantastic. Um, I, I <laughs> oh, think that goody. you know you're <laughs> Baya. She's saying all of these things, and then in the middle of the conversation, it's completely obscured by a, and then a big column of like smoke and flame, kind of like I'll drifts just need up to calm from behind. Down. <laughs> But Bayer doesn't see it. Bayer's like facing away Ring. from it, but the Ring. two of you see Ring. this thing and it just drowns <laughs> out ev everything Ring. that they're saying. Um, we gotta go! And, and <laughs> this is where I've got to start getting creative with like, okay, how do I do fail? You guys have rolled so many failures. We are rolling um, pretty bad. I know, right? Super oh. bad. Okay, so <laughs> I think average I, I, roll okay. on 2d6. No, so what I think, because again, this is like, I don't always want to just do conditions and damage. So as you're saying this, like, Bayer, you're taking time to try and calm them down. You hear armored footsteps about to enter the alleyway behind you guys. Like, you you, you all hear, like, I think they're this way. Like, you don't have time to sit here anymore. You've got to do I, like, something. Turn their faces towards the noise and I'm next to it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah. So, like, somebody needs to act here. Somebody needs to get you out of this alleyway and, and get moving. Who wants to do... What, what does that look like? Who's doing stuff? Um. So, I, I would say that Meili's been enjoying the fire, watching the fire. Kind of like... I feel like uh, Meili and Kahina are kind of like Katie and me in real life in that she hates the heat. I hate the cold. <laughs> so I've just been yep. back. Well, well, Kahina's been kind of hating the heat from the flames. Uh, Mei Li's been kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to turn and look at them and be like, now listen, lovelies. 
Uh, I think the show is over. We have some rather angry uh, extras coming our way. So maybe you want to go that way down the alleyway, exit stage left, pursued by a bear, and I'm going to hold them back a little bit with a little diversion. Um, and I'm going to start kind of, uh, flames start kind of sparking in my hands um, okay. as I try and draw from the explosion and create like a, a firewall or something like that just to hold um, hold the, the soldiers back. Now I'm wondering if this would um, come under my move, here's the plan. Which is when you okay. work on a, you uh, uh, when you work out uh, when you work out a plan with someone, roll with creativity, and then there's a couple of things um, like I can aid someone, call out a warning or command to reduce fatigue, or I can rally people with invigorating words negating a condition. Um, but I I don't know because okay. it says like. When you work out a plan with someone, and I'm kind of just talking to myself right now, so... I, I, I think everyone, it's... Right? You're talking to everyone. Mm. I, I think this is less of a plan yeah. and more you just taking more. bold action. Um, now, okay. what I was trying to figure with this was... Um, so, and again, you know, I'm, we're, we're still learning the game, including me. You, you know, you're a performer. You use firebending. You know how to use firebending, but it's a big wall of fire... Is that, do you think that that's like a skill or your training? Or do you think that this is mainly pushing like the limits of her powers? Like you tell me, like, is this like something you think that she would be trained to do? Or is this you trying to improvise mm. with your own firebending? So bearing in mind that we are teenagers, so quite young in our training, we're not, mm. you know, um, you know, You're big badass masters. final form cells. Mm. I would say that Melee's training mostly comes from performing in the opera, so it's things mm. to kind of enhance the performance. So I would say that creating a wall of fire to block the alleyway is probably um, pushing uh, my limits. Yeah. Yeah, I think that this is a push your luck then, right? So like Melee's mm. abilities are much more precise because you have to be careful of harming the audience. You have to be aware yeah. of like using your power. So I can almost imagine more graceful, perfected moves. This is just mm -hmm. big out of flame, block the alleyway, <sighs> you know, and these are firebenders as well. I think this is going to be pushing your luck. Mm, so true. when you push your luck in a yeah. risky situation, say what you want to do and roll with passion. Um, so this is going to be with passion for you, uh, old. Okay, so 2d6. Uh, oh, 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 I rolled two sixes! Oh, oh, here we go. Nice. Minus one for passion for Mei Li, so that is an 11. It's an 11, but it's still 10 or higher, so there's no critical hits. Like a 12, is no, a 10, 11, and a 12 are the exact same result, right? Um, and it's also, this is kind of good, it was push your luck, because Mei Li's currently quite insecure. Like, you're worried about your training, like mm. you couldn't pull it off earlier. So this is like almost a bit of an improv, like, risky plan. Um, so on a push your luck, on a 10 plus, your boldness pays off despite the cost. The DM tells you what other lucky opportunity falls into your lap. Um... Oh. So normally there'd be a cost to this. Um, uh, so and it does say despite the cost. So I wonder what the way. I, in fact, what I'd say is the cost of this melee is maybe one fatigue, just because this is an exhausting mm -hmm. move. Like you're channeling the most yeah. kind of bending power you've done before. But you catch uh, maybe like a barrel of oil that was like in a merchant store, and this big kind of thing goes off. Uh, and the soldiers are taken back from it. Even though they're firebenders, they're like, some of them probably aren't. Well, not all of them would be firebenders. Some of the soldiers are like, oh, oh, what is that? Uh, we've got something. And they begin shouting. It's caused like this panic, which is the perfect diversion. Um, and they have to bring in more reinforcements. So as you lead everybody else out of the alleyway, you kind of pull them away, uh, rushing, uh, you know, spinning down the, the all the different things. You notice that to... You know, as you're making your way through, um, you're going to probably go past uh, the open air theatre where the Golden Chrysanthemum is performing tonight. You you know that there's going to be a big crowd there, and I think that's the opportunity. Is that as you kind of cause this great big gout of flame, uh, you actually are like it's pulled enough of the guards that you can kind of slip your way down the various alleyways and use your knowledge of these streets to kind of easily get away. And if you wanted to, you could try and dip into the the theatre if needed. Um, Mm. amazing opportunity there's in theory you guys could just make your way to the safe house with that role right because it gives you uh you know I mean, a, a super super role <laughs> yeah um so unless there's anything else somebody wants to do as you're kind of being pulled along um we could just cut to the, classic the, the running montage house. yeah, yeah. <laughs> just want to Legs remind freeling. melee about subtlety <laughs> <laughs> 
amazing. Uh, would you rather I leave you behind there? I could have done nothing. I, you no, know, no, no, thank I, I you. Thank you. you thank you. No, that's perfect. <laughs> thank you. So we have these kind of like last moments and then, you know, TV show, we get a cut to uh, you guys sneaking your way into the back of the Sunset House uh, tea shop. Um, you kind of make your way to the back and you manage to sneak in. The guards, all distracted by this giant flame and the fires and, and the pirates and everything else going on in the city. Um, you sneak your way in and uh, you, you see kind of nervously waiting her cane kind of resting up against her chair. Um, you can see this sort of maybe in her 50s uh, Earth Kingdom woman wearing the traditional green and sort of cream colors, um, kind of stone, little stone earrings in her ears, uh, graying, slightly graying hair. Uh, is She's kind of nervously glancing around, and when she sees you uh, enter, she's like, quick, quick, down into the basement before anything. And then she slides the doors and begins latching them in the... in you know in order um and she pulls away a piece of like straw mat um and you can see that there is like a trap door she lifts it up and gestures you all down into the basement which is where she keeps like all of her maps and supplies and things like that um kind of hurrying you all downstairs uh, she slides the the trap door and makes her way down <sighs> what on earth was all of that i i heard the explosions from here we can explain, we can explain it. Uh, we tried to get in, it was gonna be so easy, so easy, and I forgot to cover his mouth. So he made a noise when I hit him on the... Anyway, we had to accelerate the plans, and May League kind of put a little bit too much into it, you know what I mean? And, and then big explosions. Everyone heard us, and we had to get out of there fast. I'm sorry. Everyone heard us. Oh, they all heard us. They probably yes, they followed us here. All... They did all hear you, Rang. I th we should be safe here, but this is going to complicate things. Did you did did you manage to destroy all of the ships? Did 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 Admiral did any of Admiral Carr's forces get away? Oh, I mean, we one, got four. one got away. There were five. They'll still be making, they'll still be making their way Oops. to the volcano. The the gates are locked down. The soldiers. I I went and checked them earlier. One of the, a captain under Admiral Carr is watching over the main gates. The pirate queen has got all of her gangsters everywhere running around checking all the exits. We're going to have a hard time getting out of the city now, but if one of them got away, we... I hate to ask this of you, but you must go to the, the volcano. You must stop them. If they, if they can erupt this volcano, it will cause untold devastation. Volcano! That was hot enough, what Melee did just back there. We're going to go to the really hot volcano? Yeah, I don't oh, like strange. that idea. Kahina is um, just got some ice on her hands and she's just holding it up to her forehead to try and cool <laughs> herself down because she's like, ugh. Well, there is no one else, Reng. I'm sorry, but there's no soldiers here. Merchant's Pier, you've seen what it is. It's a pirate's town. We're the only ones who can stop the Fire Nation here. And I'm no good. And she kind of picks up her cane and, and gestures it like her bad leg. I can't do it. I have to trust all of you to do this. Ah! <laughs> Fire! What? What? What do you think? I mean, I think we're going to a volcano. Ah! <laughs> it just storms about. <laughs> but we have to. If the Fire Nation are going to go up there and empower themselves, and, and they're going to destroy this entire place. We have to. Take a moment. You need whatever just happened out there. I'm sure it was quite. It was a lot. Take a moment. You're going to need to. You'll probably want to grab some supplies before you leave, or you could just try and get out as quickly as possible. There's um. And she begins pulling out maps. Um. She begins pulling out maps and rolls it out. Mount Makapu. Mount Makapu is here. Uh, and if you follow the coast, uh, there's a small fish, a fishing town not too far away from Merchant's Pier, just before the river. Uh, it's called Harbour Town. You may be able to pick up some supplies there, but it's still a, at least a day or so's travel. You may want to grab some things before you leave. Uh, cross the river. There's a mountain pass. And then when you get into the mountains, uh, there's a hidden village, Makapu Village. It's hidden. Many other resistance members uh, operate out of there. If you can reach that, they'll be able to help you getting up to the volcano. And they might even be able to help provide you with some, some other fighters, some soldiers that may be able to help you. Um, but you need to reach the village. At least let them know what the Fire Nation is planning. Uh, they don't know what's coming. You're the only ones who can do this. There's also right. also one only one ship going that way. We took down four. Apparently, there was five. 
We took down four, so there's not going to be that many there. Hopefully, maybe there might be it's some. Not but... really about who is. It's who's on that ship. Think about it. The Iron Juggernaut's still there. He it is very powerful. But I I need to practice. I need to make my skills better. I couldn't touch him. But I have to I have to take him out. I can't let him destroy another village. It's just not an option. Then we'll take him out together. We can't let the Fire Nation destroy another settlement. And uh as much as I do love the idea of being powered up by the uh, powers of the volcano, it probably is best if we don't have hundreds of Fire Nation soldiers beefed up on all that liquid hot magma. Uh, Ren casts a suspicious glare towards Meili at the, like, he's just put those two things together. It's like, wait, Meili does fire stuff. There's a volcano of fire stuff. Fire Nation gets powered up by fire stuff. Are we all being tricked into going along with Mei Li so she could be powered up by fire stuff? And he's just spiraling in his mind. <laughs> it's just a doom spiral. Why are you, why are you looking at me like that, Rang? No reason. Uh, can I do my move? Suspicious <laughs> sure. mind. <laughs> sure. <laughs> this is Chris. So, Chris Trot just wants to use cool things. Together. Sure. You t tell us what work, how it works. Suspicious mind. When you watch a person carefully to figure them out, roll with focus on a seven to nine, hold on a ten plus, hold two, and uh, I have to. But you have to answer these questions truthfully, basically. If I get any of these, um, mm -hmm. so uh, my focus right now is plus one. So okay. maybe six plus one. I just wanted to do it. <laughs> You're going to get all the good rolls on this stuff, and then when yeah. you're like, yeah. you're going to Get them die. out of the way. Oh, it's only a six, so it doesn't even succeed. On a, on a miss, you tip your hand, but you can shift your balance away from center to ask one question right now. So let's have a look at your balance here, Trot. So self-reliance and trust. Well, this would definitely not be going towards trust. Um, no. <laughs> so it's up to you. You could ask one question uh, to move yourself to being more, like, concerned about yourself. Like, this is... You know, you would push yourself to be uh, away from trust in your balance. So it's not a tipping my hand as in like I reveal to Melee that oh, what my no, intentions are. No, yeah, you are. do that as well. Yeah, I do that she, anyway. she picks up that you are very suspicious of her and doubting her. Absolutely. I think I'm straying towards self reliance in this case rather than trust. Yeah. Obviously, I'm starting Absolutely. to lack trust. <laughs> so I guess I'll move that but across. It's only if you want to. You could choose to just. Melee figures out what you're doing and then that's yeah. it. But you you could push it one um, towards self-reliance to ask one question. You know what? I'm just going to just blurt out. Uh, it's not because you, you're the Fire Nation. You're going to get powered up with a volcano and it, I think that you're going to be working for them or anything. <laughs> Why would you think that? Rang, darling, I can read you like an open book. And it saddens me, it truly does sadden me, that after all the time we've spent together, these, what, three, four, five weeks, you are still questioning my motives. I am not loyal to the Fire Nation. You should know that. Dawa, can you back me up here? Oh my god, she's such a good actress. Rang, you've got no reason actress. to be doubtful. Meili <laughs> was there for me when no one else was. She, she took me in. Her and the right. Golden Chrysanthemum Troop, they, they helped me when I was alone, at my Look, lowest. Uh, I'm just worried, okay? Like, we're, we're in over our head here, we're just like a, a group of kids just trying to do something crazy, like stop the Fire Nation from attacking villages. Why are we being brought on to do this? I just want to go because home. We're, because because we're, if we don't do it, no one else will. We can make a difference. Maybe they should. Here. Okay. You're not wrong, Rang. Other people should. But people are scared. People don't want a war. They don't want to fight. And especially here in Merchant's Pier, they're mainly more interested in gold in their purses than they are with fighting a good cause. But lots of Earth Kingdom places, there are fighters. There are people like us doing what we can. I wish only that I could help in more ways, but I'm a... I'm a clerk, I'm an administrator. I can organize things, I can help plan and communicate, but I'm not a warrior. 
You are. You are young, yes, but I also believe you can do more than what you think. You just need to... You need to trust each other more. Um, and Ring, I'm actually going to use... Uh, this NPC is going to attempt to shift your balance towards trust. Um, so, uh, you can either choose to go along with it, and you can just move yourself towards trust, or you can resist it. If you think that Rang is like, no, I, d I don't trust these people, or I don't want to kind of do that, you can attempt to resist it. But if not, you just go along with it. I don't think I am resisting it. I think I, I want, I'm looking for those answers. I'm still a kid, right? I yeah. want an adult yeah, and this, to tell this me adult that everything's like, going to be okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so you're going to shift it to, so you're actually going to go to towards trust when an NPC shifts you. Oh, so I'm now, I was in the middle. I went back because yep. of trying to out melee <laughs> and her intentions, and yep. now I'm plus one yeah. for trust minus one for self yeah like song seen this like little outburst and is now like look you need to trust each other because i can't do this you need to do this um and to do that you need to trust each other um i'm going to i'm going to go make some supplies i can at least get you some food and packs ready but uh, camping equipment or anything else you think you might need you're going to have to source for yourselves and also try and think of a way to get out of the city without being detected the the if you alert the Fire Nation or Peony what you're doing, it won't be long until Carr sends probably his mercenary, this Onyx Juggernaut, after you. Um, the, the better you can sneak out of the city, the better head start you'll have before they come after you. I'll be back in a moment. Try to just get some rest, um, come up with a plan, and, uh, and then we'll think about getting you out of the city as soon as, soon as possible. So I'm just going to get up and leave you guys uh, to your own. There are like rooms down here and things like that, like bedrolls, but you probably want to try and get on this as soon as possible. But this is a great moment like to have conversations amongst yourselves or like come up with plans, whatever you guys want to do, basically. Okay, so how, how deep in this, how big is this place we're in the city? Like how Merchants Pit, it's not quite oh. a city. It's like a big town. It's got a wall. Right. Okay. Um, so uh, it's actually in the show. It's kind of got like a big long wall that goes around the harbor and there's a big long harbor um the harbor is where all of the merchants they have like barges and ships with lanterns strung up all lit up almost like little streets out on the docks um and they sell everything here it's a black market town so they sell illegal things they sell animals they sell supplies um it's where katara buys the water scroll from i was about to ask i was about to yep. ask yeah mm. yep yeah. Uh, so it's a bit run down. I think that uh, in this era, I'm actually going to say it's a little bit more um, put together. There's actual like proper stone buildings. It's not all shacks and things like that. Um, but yeah, it's like a little, it, it's it's a big town with a wall that basically protects it. Um, so you, there is a gate. Uh, that means that you're either going to have to sneak over the wall somehow, or you're going to have to sneak through the gate somehow if you want to avoid being detected. Mm, okay. Um, and then it was about a day to the next uh, sort of to Harbour Town, yeah. To, to make your way to the mountains, it's going to be like three or four days. Um, so you're going to need some supplies at least, like food and water and, and stuff like that. Um, but there is a town on the way. It's called Harbour Town. Okay. Um... If I may, uh, we could go and return to the Golden Chrysanthemum Troop and ask for some supplies there. Uh... You know my company are in town. Be willing to part with supplies, uh, considering who we are and what we've just done. I'm sure they would. You know, it's it's my troop. It's the troop that took Dawa in as well, and I'm sure they wouldn't say no. Mama Hong, you know, she's a fearsome ogre, but she wouldn't let her darlings starve. Would she let me starve? Probably, yes. Okay. Supplies for one person acquired. We're making progress. She would, she would She would definitely agree to Dawa. Look, Dawa can give this little face. It's ever so, darling. Go on. The, the, look at that. Look at that. Can you say no to that? You taught me really well. I don't know how. I, I wasn't exactly. very good at that before I met you. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> you carried off perfectly, my love. Oh, thank you. I'll do it again. Oh, oh look, Saddam. my Saddam. heart is breaking. <laughs> Someone get this poor orphan child a drink of tea, Ring is please. Like holding out food, and he just seems to be like instinctively like, 
Did you want something? Or do you want some food or something? <laughs> what, what, what is it? Are you okay? Amazing. Oh, I need to master oh, prime brava. cube. That's the next Ren, one. Where did you mm, get that yes. food? Because that looks an awful lot like supplies. Huh? <laughs> it's just like, like, it's like a handful of like three day old jerky and nuts. It's just like, it's not like actual food. It's garbage. Oh, hey, this is my stuff. I brought it all the way from Kyoshi. Okay, you want some? Okay. You want some? Fire? Wait, Kyoshi? We haven't been there for. Okay. Okay. Um, it does smell no. quite bad now. I have to say. Yeah, it stinks. A it's bit. like uh, you know, old, old sort of. Um, uh, God, I, my knowledge of Avatar animals is going to be completely failure here. <laughs> of like, what? What would you eat? <laughs> I don't it's know. Just something. Two animals next to each other. Cow eagle. <laughs> cow eagle. Yeah. There you go. Bang. We've, made, we've made a new one. Cow eagle. Cow eagle jerky. Um, so a couple of things. I want to bring up some stuff. So you guys, a couple of you guys have conditions, um, and I want to talk yes. about how you guys can clear those. So conditions obviously give you, like, minus two is a big deal in this game. Like, a minus two means that, you know, an eight, which would be a success, becomes a failure. Uh, to clear conditions, you've got two options, and also regain fatigue. You can either use the move comfort and support, which is when you take a moment to genuinely try and comfort, support, or help somebody, uh, you do that move. The other one is, and you'll have this on your actual full character sheets, not the little things that we've got on Roll20, but your full character sheets, it has a whole section called clearing conditions. Um, and each one, there's a different way, like an RP thing you can do to clear it. So angry, you can break something important or put others in danger. And that will clear anger from yourself, but obviously it creates a scenario in the game that we then kind of play out. Um, afraid, run from danger or difficulty. So you would actually just be like, nope, I'm going to run away. Uh, foolish, take full do hardy that action. Already? Huh? Did we kind of do that already? Um, the run from danger or difficulty. I think you were not necessarily running from danger or difficulty, but kind of uh, nav you were kind of making a tactical with withdrawal. Escaping um, this would be like <laughs> in a sin. It, it's more like this would be in a situation where you could fight. You choose to run away. Okay. Um, hmm. This was like that was more of a kind of set up for the game. So we'll we'll make gotcha. this more of a, a an active thing. Um. Uh. Uh, so foolish is take full hardy action without talking to your companions so basically like do something crazy and rush into battle uh, or, or do something reckless uh, guilty make a personal sacrifice to absolve your guilt or insecure offer aid or support to someone competent um, so those are those are some things to keep in mind but also you can comfort each other and uh, that's also a big one I like how um, the conditions are specifically tied to specific ways to get rid of that thing mm -hmm. and not the other yeah. ones it's not like a generic clear condition thing it's like no yeah. in order to get rid yeah. of being afraid you have to run away from danger <laughs> yeah and like some people like i know um katie's kahina like one of her abilities is that when she fights like when she turns to fight her adversary she gets to just clear her conditions and say like oh. nope i'm fighting my bad guy now That's cool. and then so yeah, so there's like the the different types of character. The hammer gets a thing, the you know the icon gets a thing, and, and stuff like that. So it's all kind of a big deal. Nice, um, cool. Well, so at the moment, so yeah, the scenario is you guys are in the safe house. You're safe for now, right? Until you leave this place, you you don't have to worry about being caught. I'm going to tell you that now. So this is if you want to make a plan, if you want to decide what you want to do next, or if you want to you know try and talk to each other, this is the time to do it. Um, otherwise, we will jump to whatever action you want to take next. Okay. Um, I will start training ready because I know we're going on a hike up a mountain and we've done a lot of hiking from Kyoshi. We've okay. traveled a variety of different terrain. So I'm just going to start doing push-ups. Uh, <laughs> so in this like basement, you just start, yeah. Rang just starts doing all push-ups. And okay. uh, I, I might encourage everyone else to do the same. It's like, you got to keep limbo. You got to go up mountains. You got to learn to breathe better. Um, we're gonna be losing oxygen as we get higher and higher. And uh, you can stay hydrated as well. We we'll get some water, all that kind of stuff. You know, like military drills. <laughs> I think yeah, okay. I've got about oxygen. I mean... I've got plenty of it, and I just like blow yeah. a little like. <laughs> <laughs> My hair just like wobbles in the air. Ooh, like your face is that thing where like it's like a dog in a uh, leaning out of a car. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like uh, behind Reng where he can't see me. Kind of sat cross-legged on the ground. And I'm like, yeah, I'm doing it now. One, two, three. What I'm actually doing is I'm going to, can I use the uh, meditation move? And I want the meditative thing to be 
take basically taking off and applying this uh, Kiyoshi makeup to be this almost routine thing that I do that becomes so like such a symbol of the Kiyoshi warrior thing. Um, yeah. And my plan is to take the makeup off because yesterday, if I was wearing all this stuff, I kind of want to be less, you know, obvious oh. walking through the town. Um, but as, as a oh. meditative thing as well, which is a move I can do that gives me focus. Yeah, you can do. Yeah. So uh, I think that's supposed to be permanent, by the way, uh, Tom. You just apply that. You don't have to activate it. I think it's just you increase your focus in general. Um, ah, okay. In that case, but I, I love it. I but that's a really cool thing that you've just done, right? That's a really awesome thing. Um, the only thing I'm thinking of is taking off the makeup is kind of a big deal, right? Like that's that's who you are. That's the organization that you're an icon. Ah, of. I think I had a different idea about the makeup for Kyoshi's in that case in which case I'm not doing that uh I I, I feel like I'm further ahead in the series than I remember the Kyoshi warriors being 30 years into the 100 year war <laughs> well, I know that they they do take it off but what I'm saying is like and you can do that but it's just to me that would almost be a little bit of like freedom right that's that's it's leaning away thing, from yeah. the role of the Kyoshi warrior and more doing your own independent thing could, I don't know. Could I, uh, could I help a little bit with that? And so, mm -hmm. um, I want to try and clear my insecurity um, condition. Mm -hmm. And to do that, I must aid or support com uh, comfort or support a um, a, a competent, competent person. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if, like, perhaps I could produce like um, an opera mask and be like, mm -hmm. you know, if you want to change your appearance, perhaps you could use this instead. Um, mm. Or I could embellish your makeup to make it look more operatic, and we could say we're part of the troupe. Um, and it, would that? Do you think that would kind of work as a, a comfort or? A, yeah, yeah, um, I think so. Yeah. I think. Um, yeah. Tom forgot uh, the significance of the makeup, um, so I think I would. Yeah, I would instead have a, a disguise, not necessarily an adjustment to the makeup as much as yeah, maybe just the mask or something to disguise mm. myself better in the street when we do go outside. Mm. Um, yeah. Mm. yeah, you can kind of change your outfit, put a hood up and then wear the mask and that would certainly hide this very obvious thing, right? The Kyoshi Warrior makeup is this very clear, like, there's a Kyoshi Warrior running around. Any minute. Uh, <laughs> Wasn't a Kyoshi Warrior blowing up a ship yesterday or like five exactly. minutes ago? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, I'd so, say you don't even need to. I, I don't think that that's a role. I think that that is just, yeah, you 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 can clear that condition. Uh, mainly like that's a, a lovely little moment where like you kind of help out and, and share this mask kind of thing. Um, can I ruin it? Cool. Yeah, you <laughs> absolutely can. It's like 99, 100. And I get up and turn around and it's like, ah! <laughs> it's looking at yeah. this operatic face of Bayer and being terrified. See, he can't even recognize you. It's not me. I mean, it is me, Reng. It's me under here, Bayer. Disguise, I like me. it. Stealthy. Whoa! Sure. <laughs> I do jump a lot. <laughs> um, supplies, supplies, we need supplies. Sure. Uh, and yeah, just for anybody who's listening, like just to, if you're not familiar with Avatar, Kyoshi Warriors are all feet, are, is a group of all female warriors from the island of Kyoshi who style themselves on Avatar Kyoshi, who's one of the former avatars. And they wear kind of uh, almost geisha like, kind of like white, full white face paint with like red, um, like eye makeup. And it, it's got a very distinct visual look to it. Um, and it's like very, you know, operatic, very much like Melee's operatic kind of makeup, but it's very specific to the Kyoshi warriors and the island of Kyoshi and Avatar Kyoshi of whom they take their name, who they look up to. Uh, cool. Yes. All right. Well, unless there's anything else, uh, what's, what's the plan for getting out of this city then? What's, what's the plan? Are you going to head to the golden chrysanthemum? Are you just going to sneak your way out? Um, you can't, you, you know, the more time you spend here, the closer the bad guys are going to get to, to igniting this volcano. And maybe the closer they are to finding you guys in the city. If you Golden can get us up the wall, if someone can get us up the wall, I can sort of create like a little slide to get us down the other side again. You know? A little, little ice slide, anyone? I think it's quite fun. I can help sounds with fantastic. Okay. It's True. not uh, warm. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> sure. No offense, Mary. Right. It's just quite. It's getting it's quite warm. Okay. 
none taken, right. my love. There's a time and a place for everything. So if that's if that's the plan, if you if there's nothing else, we can just cut to you guys making your way to the wall then, basically, and that will be you know we see the scene. Uh, Song comes back with little packs with maybe a day, maybe two days worth of food, not much. Um, on a last minute kind of notice, uh, trying to avoid detection and suspicion, uh, they managed to get you a pack of a couple of days food each, um, and that's it. That's all you get. Uh, unless you're going to go out and get supplies yourself uh, you guys make your way out and you have to sneak through the alleyways of Merchant's Pier um, and you make your way to one of the more quieter sections of the of the, the town um, still busy but quieter and yeah there is this you know sort of good sort of you know 15 20 foot stone wall um, there are Fire Nation patrols that go along the top of it um, what's the plan? Can I try and like create stacks of like crates and barrels to try and make a makeshift step up onto the top of the wall uh yes you can do i'm just I'm, again i'm looking at like all of these things to make sure i'm doing the right um move here i think again this is going to be a rely on your skills and training like you're using airbending to try and form like this this step up to the up to the top for sure um i'd say that the, the you know the risk here uh to be clear it could make a lot of noise. There are guards patrolling around. You, you, you're in like a little alleyway. You don't know. You, you know that there are guard patrols up there, but you don't know if there are people up there right now. You don't know how many there are up there. Um, so that's potentially a risk. But yeah, you absolutely can do. Alrighty, nice. Um, I was just wondering if I could help uh, Dawa with my here's the plan. Um, so when you work out a plan with someone, and then I want to do the kind of um, well, what's the plan? Someone? You got to you got. You got to sit there and make so if, a plan. If the plan is for us to go over the wall with Dawa kind of uh, creating the way up and Kahina creating the way down, mm -hmm. um, I would like to aid Dawa. Um, I guess like you, maybe using the kind of the more martial arts aspect of my opera training. Um, mm. You know, I imagine it as kind of almost like a wuxia martial art, kind of like you know the wire fu type. Um, mm -hmm style like if she kind of gusts me up could i perhaps you know look up and see like where the patrols are uh yes yeah. so there's there's what you're trying to do there is a couple of different things so mm -hmm. the first thing is if you want to do the here's the plan like mm -hmm. play that out like you 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 this is mainly taking charge like you had an idea but like mm -hmm. what does that look like in the game like you you narrate mm -hmm. and and describe what this looks like when you do this whole making a plan thing and then if you want to go up and check and see if there's guards around that's a separate move called assess okay. the situation um but you could do both it's just mm. i want to see that in the game i want to see that mm. in play not okay. just i want to use my ability it's like what does that look like so I'll do the here's the plan um, bit and, and just up to that bit. Um, so I imagine we're kind of stood, you know, if we're thinking in kind of TV show stuff, we're just stood at the bottom of this yeah. wall, all looking up in a line and the camera just pans up and the wall goes up and up and up and up. And we're just like, okay. Um, and then I'll just go, right, here's the plan, lovies. We already have our key lady, Dawa, who is going to get us up this side using her wonderful airbending powers. And we have our second star lady, Kahina, who's going to get us down the other side using her waterbending powers. Baya, Reng, I would like it if you two could assist by spotting uh, for, for the enemies. Look out for the enemies. Look out for the patrols. Uh, try to minimize the noise. Meanwhile, Dawa, if you could uh, gust up that barrel, that barrel, and that barrel, I think if we could stack them together, that would make a rather lovely base ladder. And then, do you think you're strong enough to gust us the rest of the way up? Uh, that's down to you, my love. I can right. give it a try. I've, I haven't gusted myself up for a very long time. But we can give it a go. Sure. So at this point, this is where Kim, as Maylee, is now going to roll mm -hmm. the here's the plan move, right? So we've done the cool okay. fiction. We see the scene. Now you get to roll and we get to see if it goes as, as well as you'd hoped. Um, so this is so, uh, so this is just roll with creativity. Roll with creativity. Okay. Uh, come on. Yikes. Ooh. Big yikes. Ooh. Big old yikers. <laughs> I See, rolled. You guys, when we play a race, <laughs> it's like, oh, Mark's rolling so well. Mark rolls all these natural 20s. It's like, well, in this game, I just need you guys to roll bad. So you here's the best thing. Two. Uh, I miss, rolled a natural says, two. 
and that's and two, plus two plus two. So, so a four. It says here under uh, the bold, which is Kim's archetype, on a miss, mm -hmm. you still get to hold one. So you get three things, Kim, and you get to pick that, that mm -hmm. now and you get to hold it until you use it. So you can aid someone, add plus one to their roll, and you choose after the roll. Uh, you can call out a warning or a command, reduce the fatigue they mark by one. So if they would take fatigue, you can reduce it. Or you can rally someone with invigorating words, negate a condition they would otherwise suffer. So when I would inflict a condition, you can say, well, no, ignore that. Uh, so you get to choose one of those and you get to hold it. However, <laughs> on a miss, hold one, but your plan encounters some disastrous opposition right from the start. And I know what, I've got an idea in my head what this is going to be. Mm -hmm. As you're making this plan, you like gather everybody up to an alleyway and you're like, right, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. And Rang, you're going to do it. And then you turn back and all of those barrels are being wheeled away by a man in a car. <laughs> and he's got loads of carriages <laughs> and he's just like, hum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, and he's just wheeling the cart away. And now there are no barrels or carts. Or I think any, or, during or the entire plan, all those carriages. <laughs> during the entire plan, if uh, Melee's just speaking, I'm just, Melee? Melee? Maybe and this is what we're going to do, wait. and then it's going to be no, like wait. this, and then we're going to go over there, problem. and then we're going to go up, yeah, do, and then there's going to be a thing. slide down. Everybody, but, take your marks, and we will begin no, but in I can't three, step, two. Step one has failed. <laughs> Barrels are gone. And you lean over, no. and you just get like a... <laughs> it's well, who was in charge of props? Who was in charge of props? Ring? I think Fire? that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Cabbages? This is by the looks of it. This is disaster. This is a disaster. Uh, and at this well, point, I'm all out of right, ideas. At this point, you're at this alleyway. You've got the wall here. You, if you go back into the city, you, I'm going to tell you guys now, you're going to encounter Fire Nation soldiers, like, or, or the pirates. You're going to encounter some group looking for you. You either get over this wall now and improvise a way up and over, or you have to go back in and risk being being found. Soz guys, that's Kim saying that. Uh, really. Okay, what about what anything. about what about this? There's uh, like a little hooks things up there, places we can maybe throw a rope. It's a long, long way, but maybe Dawa, uh, maybe you could just me. I'm light, and I'll, I'll just like a rope. sneak a ride with that guy, and hopefully he goes like by the the gate of the wall. Oh wait, yeah, the entrance, the exit to the wall is like right there. Actually, you might be leaving. <laughs> We could just hop in the back. Hide amongst all the crates and stuff. We could try that. Did you want to try that? We could try that. I mean, it seems like he's going back to the <gasps> south. I jump cabin. in. <laughs> so, ring. Okay. Uh, I use my lance to, like, pole vault into the back. <laughs> Follow me. Right. I'm going to say... <laughs> This is, you are pushing your luck on this. This to me is the most <laughs> obvious pushing of luck that I've ever seen. Um, in that you are just hoping that this guy takes you where he wants to take you and hoping he doesn't hear you land in the back of his wagon for sure. Um, so this is uh, with passion. Roll with passion to see. Okay. Plus one on that one. Ten. T that's the best result you can Ooh. get again whenever you guys push your luck it pays off um so your po your boldness pays off despite the cost i think when you land uh ring um it it's you take like a, a nasty kind of like blow so mark one fatigue like you kind of like oof, kind of land in amongst all these crates you kind of bump and bruise yourself um but you know what as you guys watch ring's car turns off and is now heading out of the <laughs> out of the harbor town you can like, see in the back amongst all the crates and barrels just one hand pops out and a thumbs up <laughs> <laughs> um and yeah you see but the the cart is pulling away like ring ring is now gone and, a, and is a, now a beckon <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean yeah it, we need to get onto that cart specifically yeah. right yeah. Sure. <laughs> no i, I think I... That at this point go on can I speed myself up in getting to said cart by putting like a sheet of ice along the floor as I go and just like propelling myself along it, like slide. Oh, you like when you slide along the the like hardwood floors with socks on, you know, just like yeah, 
Mm. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I was going to yeah. say for the rest of you, you're going to have to catch up. So I think like that's definitely I want to see some like moves or something from like you guys catching up. But for Kenna, that's that's definitely a uh, rely on skills and training. Like you're going to use this maneuver that you've practiced with your your water bending to skate along and then jump in at the Maybe. last second. We'll see. Ooh. Well, three. Move five, six, seven, seven. And this what is, is with Plus... uh, relying on skills and training with focus. Oh, uh, six. Frick. It was, a, it, it was a seven and it went down to a six because of my minus which, one. Um, which hold did you take on your plan, Kim? Did you take the plus one or did you take another one? I was going to say aid someone. So add a plus one to their roll, choose after rolling. So, do you want to um, do that now? Oh. Yeah, I'll use that now. Um, seven. Okay. <laughs> All right, so on a seven to nine, you do it imperfectly. The GM tells you how your approach might lead to unexpected consequences. Uh, accept those consequences or mark one fatigue. What are some good... I mean, if you guys have got ideas, by the way, for what consequences I mean, from your own the idea roles, I... is that uh, is you can skate on the ice. <laughs> I mean... But maybe everybody else is like... for us. Yeah, yeah. okay. Mm. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, sure. I like that. So, so Gehenna, you managed to kind of skate along. Um, now you, and again, you can choose to not have that happen and just mark one fatigue. Like you could maybe at the last second, like break all the ice so it doesn't cause troubles for everybody else, or you can just leave it as it is and you're in the wagon. I mean, it depends what you guys you guys want. Do you have any other ideas, or do you want to use the ice to get there? Otherwise, you have to kind of find your own way. So, I'm happy with either. Right. I think traveling on the ice is going to make it more difficult for us than than I easy. Can it will. The ice You'll get there just fine, but that could be the hitch in the plan. All right. I'll take a yeah. fatigue. Okay, so you're going to just mark one fatigue, um, and so you kind of see this at the last minute, and then with your water bending, you kind of suck all the ice back up into water <laughs> and like manage to kind of pull it away uh, when you realize. But that's tiring to do. Like you have to, all this water bending is going to is, is slowly tiring you out, right? Um, okay, so we see Gehenna and Reng have now like smuggled themselves onto the back of this cabbage wagon, I guess, uh, with all, like hiding amongst the barrels and things like that. Um, but we still have Baya, Dawa, and Mei Lee. You guys are still thinking. And it's this this wagon's getting further away, right? Like it's about to yeah. like turn into like the, the gate leading out, and you can see there are Fire Nation soldiers everywhere. What's the plan here? Can, you could also still I... drink up over the wall. Like you could still yeah. try and do that. I, I imagine um Dawa, like she starts spinning her arms backwards really fast and making like two little circular currents of air and shooting them towards the cartwheels <laughs> to like spin them in the opposite direction and slow down. <laughs> so bring can, it like, backwards. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, yeah, I think this is just a rely on skills and training again. Like as you kind of uh, try and suck the wagon back, <laughs> and like the wagon guy is gonna—if this goes wrong, I the mean, wagon guy is gonna be very uh, suspicious. It sounds like it's pretty powerful. <laughs> uh, let's do it. Oh god. Whoops. Oh. I got a uh, minus one, so five for the first one. Oh, because you, you rolled twice. I, I rolled twice, like a silly. Oh, I was like, oh, wow, great roll. No, um, don't. Well, don't. A five, a five <laughs> Ignore is a the miss. good one. <laughs> yeah, no, a five is an absolute miss. No! Um, <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah, I think I think that what happens is you again, like you you do what you want. Like it's not that you don't airbend this. You know, you obviously still do. That's what you know how to do. But the the suction is way stronger than you thought it was, um, and the wagon literally gets yanked back. And you see the like the guy kind of like turning and looking around, like, huh? What the hell just happened? As his wagon like whoosh, comes back. And he's spent looking around, um, and he start. He's like, "Hey, uh, uh, what, what just? Who's? Huh?" <laughs> it's just like just calling out. Like, and, da, 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 like yeah, and you see sign, guards like... leaning over the wall now, uh -oh. like, "Hey, what's what's going on?" And he's just like, "My wagon just got pulled out from it. I, I was there, and now I'm here." <laughs> and they're like think... looking at him, like, "What are you talking about, old man?" Um, I think this like, is no, when I, I might. Jump forward and just be like, oh, no, 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 don't worry about it. Hey, look, all your stuff. We can get back on the wagon. We can get you on your way. Don't worry about it. Just, uh, just we can help you. All right. Where you go? Where you going to? We can help. Okay. Um, 
Oh, when you so there's two options here. There's a there's a move called when you plead with an NPC who cares what you think for that. help. Yeah, but he doesn't care what you think, or it's trick an NPC with creativity. I think this is it's more like, oh yeah, don't worry, buddy. We're gonna like you're trying to like distract him almost is how I interpret it. Uh, well, I know. I mean, I'm I'm saying to him, we'll help you get to where you're trying to get to. <laughs> don't worry about what just happened there. We'll get all the stuff back on the wagon, and we can help you get to where you're trying to get to. Just uh, you know. I mean. If, with us on if the back. you think this is well, what does everyone else think? What do you guys think this is? Do you think this is like more of a plead uh, for help, or is this more of a, a trick? This feels this like a very... trick because I'm in the okay. back. Yeah. We're trying to use That's this true. person. Good point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you mean you cause this problem, I and now you're have... like, don't worry about that. <laughs> that that seems like deceptive. I didn't cause the problem. I didn't cause the problem. <laughs> you're uh, part of it. You're part of it. <laughs> I'm part of it. Uh, all, all right. right, in that case, I'm currently foolish as well. Uh, so I've got minus two to trick. Um, <laughs> yeah. so, so is it with, with just creativity? a minus two? Oh, with creativity as well, plus zero. In that case, <laughs> it's a five. Uh, oh, that's my total dear. roll, it's a five. Oh, let's have a look. Well, you didn't get a success. <laughs> so let me let me just consult my like little... What what the DM can do when you when you mess up? I wonder up. how many successes we're actually going to get today, because uh, mm. there's not many. Far between. <laughs> Had one. Well, yeah. We succeed on moves and like stuff Role when we're playing. just taking a little rest, but yeah. in terms of like <laughs> actions, we're not doing too hard. <laughs> okay, so uh, you go up, you start speaking to this guy uh, who looks at you in your opera mask and hood. And oh, yeah. they just are like, oh, uh, oh, God, help, I'm being robbed. And he's like calling out and the, there's yeah, I mean, a group of like four or five Fire Nation oh, soldiers no. up on the I wall. I mean, amongst, who are like, amongst all hey. the noise of the wagon, like, I guess you can't really hear me saying like, don't worry, we can help you. Just seeing someone in a mask and robe coming yeah. out like, <laughs> he was just magically pulled backwards by something. Uh, he's a there little I bit am, on edge. Looking like he looks around, it's like, of... oh, oh. Uh. So the, 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 four, the five guards, um, you see them bringing up like crossbows. You can see that there are like four or five guards up on the wall and they bring up crossbows. Um, so what we're gonna do now is uh, we're going to take a quick five minute break and then when we come back mm -hmm. we're going to do what's called an exchange a combat exchange which is when a oh, fight boy. happens because one oh, group is definitely having a fight uh and they're going to try and stop you the guards uh and another group you guys are going to have a duel now at this point reng and kehenna you guys are hidden you can avoid this fight nobody knows that you are there you guys can hey, just be like, we're cabbages. safe. Uh, Meili and Dawa, you guys are out of the fight, but you could join it if you want to. Bayer is 100% like about to be either attacked or is going to have to run or something. Um, so you guys can decide oh. what that's going to be. But we're going to take a five minute break. When we come back, we're going to jump into that. This is Avatar Legends. Highly recommend you use the link to check out the quick start rules um, and go check out their Kickstarter coming next week. Uh, yeah. This is our first time playing it yeah. properly through, uh, and it's fun. It's a really fun, super cool, very clever game. Um, Thank you, Magpie, so, um, so much for letting us do this. Um, if you are a fan of Avatar, we highly recommend you click the Kickstarter link in the chat, mm -hmm. in the description. That would also help us yeah. a lot as well you like what yep. we're doing so please do that while we take a little break thanks thanks i'll be back in a minute <laughs> nice are we just staying on the screen uh yeah what's what do we do now you're muted Trump. i'm gonna brb <laughs> if you like you can just go to a brb i don't think uh, otherwise it's just gonna be our empty three. chairs yeah, I'm just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah sure all right
Welcome back, everybody, to our special uh, Avatar sponsor, Avatar Legends sponsored uh, one shot or two shot, really, because this is Woo. we're going to be doing this again next Thursday as well. Um, oh yeah. Avatar Legends is a tabletop role-playing game set in the world of Avatar The Last Airbender and Legend of Korra. Uh, it's made by Magpie Games, um, and we're playing through it. You can check out the Kickstarter in the link below and all of that good stuff. Uh, before we finished, uh, the guys have, have been having a rough time with their dice rolls. Uh, they are it's currently... not great. <laughs> it's not great. Uh, so the team of... We have a team of young rebels, resistant members, uh, resistance members, kind of like Star Wars, uh, who are opposing the Fire Nation, uh, which is attacking the world uh, and is, is, you know, succeeding in doing so. And it is all set in Merchant's Pier, which is like a harbor town full of like black trading and pirates and that sort of thing. And they are currently trying to escape in order to make their way to a volcano uh, called Mount Makapu. Uh, and they need to reach there because a bunch of firebenders are going there to set it off, causing a lot of problems. Um, and they've, you know, they don't know how long they have, but they need to do it. And we currently find them at the walls of Merchant's Pier. Uh, two of them have managed to successfully sneak into the back of a, uh, I believe that we did concur that it was a cabbage seller, uh, cabbage seller's wagon, uh, as they are trying to make their way out of the city, uh, thanks to a very reckless but lucky uh, guess by Reng, uh, Trot's character. Um, however, when Bayer, uh, <laughs> well, no, let's let's get the sequence of events correct. Uh, mm -hmm. Kehenna manages to also sneak into the back of the wagon using a bit of water bending, and then Dower attempted to slow the wagon down or pull it back towards them. Um, unfortunately, this spooked the driver, who became very concerned and started calling out a bunch of guards. She came to check. Bayer, Tr Tom's character, then stepped in to try and offer assistance and, and be helpful. Failed Tom the roll again. <laughs> and um, the, the merchant now believes he's being robbed and has called the guards. Um, and the I guards. Am wearing a have looked down. You are wearing I do a look disguise. Creepy. Yes, you have a big opera mask on. You have got a hood on. Um, and yeah, people are uh, concerned. And you hear uh, about it by the, the, the Fire Nation guards are like, it might be them. It might be the ones the captain's looking for. Uh, stop them. And then psh, they bring all their crossbows. And we are going to do something called a exchange, a combat exchange. And for that, I want to make sure that I've got my uh, moves or, or my knowledge of how the, it works up. So... Okay. Uh, when you engage in combat, um, NPCs uh, will choose an approach in secret. So this isn't like D&D. There's no initiative. There's no turn. Right now, the fight is between Bayer and this group of guards. Now, Dawa and Mei Li uh, may have a chance to get involved if they want to. They might be able to assist, or they can do other things to try and help. Um, Rang and Kehenna can also do that, but they are also currently hidden, so they might want to stay hidden. Um, but between the guards and Bayer, we're each going to pick a pro an approach, and there are three types of approaches. Defend and respond, advance and attack, evade and observe. Um, we both pick one, and then we reveal which ones we've picked, and then we take in, in order uh, our actions with defenders going first, attackers in the middle, and then evasion, evasive maneuvers at the very end. Um, and they basically have different things that you can do. You can pick a technique and you get to do a cool thing. Um, you do have to roll as well. Um, and depending on the roll is how many techniques you get to do. Uh, so that's pretty much where we're going to go. So uh, okay. before we have the exchange, though, Meili, Dawa, Gehenna, and Reng, what are you guys going to do? Like, this is, uh, you You hear the kind of crossbows, like, loading up. What's the plan here? Uh, in terms of Reng, uh, he's felt the entire cart being shifted and moved back. So I think he's going to peek, see that it's all going to go on south, looking at Baya, looking up at the, the guards. And I think he's getting ready to grab his lance and make sure that Baya's okay and will, is okay. willing to deflect uh arrows that sort of thing do you want to do you want to get into the fight do you want to like take an action to jump to to buy his defense and be part of this exchange i think i would yeah okay all right in that case you'll be both in it what about kahina i think she would probably want to be tactical about it given that she's in a safe position right now but mm -hmm. If there's any um, way that she could uh, 
do some water bending to potentially create a shield in front of anyone who's being shot at. Like, so if you want to do that, ice. you would need to be part of the exchange. So, like, this is the thing: is like, if you're going to do something like that, you become part of the fight. Even if you stay hidden, the enemies will know where you are, and you'll basically become part of it. The other thing I'm going to remind you of, Katie, is you currently have the afraid condition. If you just don't get involved in this fight, you will be able to clear that condition because you're still technically shaken from that battle against the Onyx Juggernaut. So, mm. like, you could be like a oh, man, like maybe a, I, you know, I'm not, I, I can't help them with this. Like, you could do that and clear that condition, but that, you know, can have its own consequences as well. But if you want to like create a shield and stuff like that, that is absolutely, uh, mm. you're going to be getting involved in what's going on. Can you decide to get involved at, at any point, or do you have to sort of? So what it will do is we'll do one exchange. So we'll have like a kind of narrative scene of like maybe the archers will fire their first volley of things. Bayer and Reng will do something. And then we stop and we kind of check with everybody else. Like, right, is, are you guys doing anything? Do you want to try and talk to them? Do yeah. you want to try and run away? Like we, we kind of stop it and then do another round. And then if it's a case of like, nope, these guys are going to keep fighting, then we have another exchange and you can join that one. Um, yeah, I think for now she'll sit tight low. and then see see, see how, how it goes. plays out alright okay uh, okay uh, what about uh, Dawa and Melee hmm Re, if you have an idea you go first because I'm still okay. pondering um, I was looking at like my my three codes in my never turn mm -hmm. my back thing and one of them is never leave a friend behind um, wow. So, I'm gonna live up to that ideal in my code, not leave anyone behind. Um, I'm gonna okay. try and um, blast like a, a cone of air up towards the archers to throw their aim off, and just keep like a constant like wind going up there, so they they're struggling okay, well, that, to aim. Yeah, so that will come into as part of the exchange. So I'm also just going to check here. So you're the idealist, aren't you? Mm. Ah, okay. Um, so when you live up to your ideals at a significant cost, someone who witnessed or hears about your sacrifice approaches you to affirm their allegiance to your group's purpose. So that's an interesting one. So we're going to... So I think that seeing you leap to your friend's defense, by the way, whether or not you succeed or anything, the the merchant, who is an Earth Kingdom merchant, sees you kind of defying the Fire Nation to protect your friend. They are they are potentially an ally here, like that you can call on later. Like they're going to be inspired by this act of yours to do. Um, also, uh, yeah, as you're going to be kind of leaning into your um, one of your balance elements, your action here, you can also at any point choose to use your action or your forgiveness score instead of what you normally roll for. So you could actually choose to say, I want to roll with action rather than with um, say creativity or focus and stuff like that. But we'll come to that oh. in a minute. So, because so, and what you're saying is that you're going to jump into a, you're going to become part of the exchange. So, all yes. your wind and stuff like that, that will be when you decide which techniques you want to use. Awesome. Um, so, while you do that, melee thoughts. Uh, seeing Dawa jump into action, because uh, Melee is kind of linked to Dawa. You know, mm -hmm. we we were uh, traveled together in the Golden Chrysanthemum Troop, and um, one of my connections is Dawa has a pretty good head on their shoulders. And the the second bit is they have a great sounding board for my ideas. So this isn't really an idea, but I think I like the bit of has a pretty good head on their shoulders. So seeing Dawa leap into action, um, I, Melee will definitely get involved as well um, in trying to kind of. Uh, uh, is this the bit where we choose defend and respond or advance and it will be in a minute yeah so i just want to yeah. i first of all yeah. i want to establish who is in the exchange yeah. then I'll we'll pick the all of the approaches and stuff like that um so the other yeah. thing to remember is like you can technically do stuff outside of a fight you don't have to be in the fight like because the fight has specific moves but doing things like i'm going to use my bending to protect a friend i'm going to use my thing to do that those are kind of like combat moves right if you okay. wanted to do something else like try and speak to these guys and say wait no stop that's a different thing and you wouldn't be part of the exchange but if you're if this is blows and doing fighting stuff you're in the exchange um so if melee wants to like shoot you know f do cool attacks you're in the exchange if you were like i'm going to try and scare off the guards i'm going to try and intimidate them or i'm going to try and trick them or i'm going to try and do that stuff you wouldn't be part of the exchange right just to explain mm -hmm. that so you have an understanding of what an exchange is an exchange is actually fighting yeah. 
Okay. Or defend, like, you know, using so, water bending to protect and defend and stuff like that. Yeah. So the guards are all on top of the wall, right? So if I was trying to mm -hmm. do anything, I'd really need... If I wanted to trick or anything like that, I'd need to be on top of the wall, maybe. Well, I mean, not necessarily. Um, it depends on what you come up with, right? Like, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but, like, you know, if you were like, oh, I'm going to try and convince them, like, hey, the thief went that way or, like, something like that, then that would be a separate thing. I wonder if I could try and... I would... I actually, I wonder if I could try and convince them that we are rehearsing for a show, and this is <laughs> part of the opera that's going to be there tonight. And that's why okay. that's why Bayer's in opera makeup, and that's why I'm in opera makeup. And okay. you know, these are just yeah. stagehands and stuff. Yeah, I'd, I'd say okay, we can do that move first, then, um, mm -hmm. because if that doesn't go well, this is definitely uh, going to be an exchange. Yep. But that's kind of, I think okay. you're trying to yeah. do that. Before, yeah. like, before bolts fly and before, you know, fists and, and fans get thrown, you're like, whoa, 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 stop, 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 we're rehearsing, we're rehearsing. You're like kind of shouting out to them. Um, so this mm -hmm. is a trick in NPC. So this is roll with creativity. Okay. Um, roll with creativity. So I have plus two to creativity. Um, oh, God, where's my dice? To, uh, Here we go. Seven, eight, nine. Nine, nine points. Okay. All right. So on a hit, they fall for it and do what you want for the moment. On a seven to nine, mm -hmm. you pick one. Uh, they stumble, take plus one forward to acting against them. So that's a plus one bonus to the next roll against them. Mm -hmm. So you could st like th they fall for it for a moment. So like for a moment, mm -hmm. they're like, oh, wait, have we made a mistake? Which would potentially mm -hmm. give like Dawa or Bayer a chance to like knock them out or do an attack if it falls to that. Um, they or the other options you can pick they act foolishly the GM tells you what additional opportunity they give you um, Or they overcommit and they are deceived for some time So so they're gonna be tricked like you have convinced them that you okay. are performing you're rehearsing But it's it's temporary. This is not gonna like they're mm -hmm. gonna figure out that oh wait No, that was stupid. Like, you know, that's this gonna be you know, yeah, 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 unless you go for so like just, they overcommit. Yeah, or, yeah yeah so I imagine as everything's about, everyone's getting ready and are about is about to attack. I will just walk out from where I've kind of been in the, um, like mm -hmm. in the shadow of the wall and be like, "Cut, cut! This is dreadful. This is dreadful. What is happening here? We are rehearsing for a show tonight with the Golden Chrysanthemum Opera Troupe. You may have heard of us. I am one of the leading ladies. Um, th this is my other leading lady. What are you doing? I got your makeup correct. W what's going on here? Who who stopped this?" <laughs> so which one of those three do you do you want, Kim, on that move sheet uh, under so, Trick and NPC? I think um, the last one, the kind of like extend they, the deception. They overcommit, they thieved for some time. So this will kind mm. of extend the duration for how long they're fooled by. Yeah, yeah. Sure. So I'm going to, uh, the last line, I'll probably look up them like, D do you not understand? This is art. You're getting in the way of art here. They look down. I kind of look around and kind of nudge each other. Uh, oh, well, this man says he was being robbed. He clearly thought he was he's being confused. Uh, and I think that because of your, uh, as the idealist Dawa, because um, this is a person who saw your kind of brave actions. Uh, so yeah, when you live up to your ideals at a significant cost, he saw that you were ready to fight um, and you know not leave your friend behind. Um, he turns around. And he's like, "Oh no, no, no! So my 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 humblest apologies, uh, fire fire warriors. Um, no, my mistake. I am part of the performance. You see, uh, I was merely playing my part, and I didn't realize you were up there. I I didn't think that you would hear my cries for aid. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, come, come we should practice elsewhere, my lady. And he kind of mm. gestures to Melee and mm. gestures further down the alleyway. Like, oh. I, I must say though, your performance was wonderful. If they thought you were in genuine oh, distress, yeah. oh. bro. Bravo! <laughs> Bravo! Oh, yes. uh, the Everyone, are like, Bravo! One of the Bravo, fire, yes. one of the excellent, fire soldiers. Excellent. One of the fire soldiers is also <laughs> clapping like, "I was convinced. I really thought he was he, he was being robbed." And like a guy shoves him. He's like, "What?" Um, and they're like, "Well, move along." And they just kind of get you to kind of move along. Uh, and the merchant will kind of like gesture you all to kind of follow him. Um, and then when you kind of get out of earshot, he'll turn around and say. I am so sorry. I, I didn't mean to alert those guards to you. I saw what I saw what you were going to do for your your friend here. It was very brave of you. Those soldiers they would have they would have shot you to pieces. Uh, it was very brave of you to stand by your friend like that. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about your cart. 
Oh, was that you? I don't really understand what happened. It also is it. It seems a bit heavier. It's going a bit slower than normal. Oh yeah. Uh, hey guys, we're safe for now. Oh. Oh. A hop out. Hey. I didn't even notice you get Sorry. in there. Uh, I what? fell in. I fell in. What were you doing in there? What? 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 What are you doing? Why were you hiding in my cart? I... Because we want to leave in a nice stealthy way didn't go to plan oh. as you probably saw but you know the, the intention was to to leave without alerting them ah i see well i mean uh yeah okay uh he looks around and he's like well uh, my name is uh, my name is dulong and um Oh yes, I'm. I'm. I'm sorry. I'm just a humble merchant, but at least I could help you get out of that little sticky situation you found yourselves in. Uh, I hope you can find a way out of the city safely. Well, are you, are you heading out the gate right now? I am, but the guards check the wagon when when you make your way through. They check it for contraband. Uh, the pirates don't like any of their materials uh, being traded outside of this place. And the Fire Nation, are, well, they're on edge about something. There's a particularly um, vigorous young woman, a captain, I believe, a swordswoman. She's checking everything, being extremely cautious. You're quite lucky. If you had been hiding in my cart, they would have checked inside of it. They may have discovered you. Oh. You can see, and I'll tell you, you get this guy for free. He, he he might help you. You're gonna have to directly like ask him, like actually ask him to help you get out of the city because this is putting him at risk. Like if okay. if he's caught with you, he'd be thrown in prison or like or, you know whatever. Um, well, we need to get out of the city somehow, town, big town somehow. Uh, is there some other way you might know that we can escape? Maybe, maybe, maybe we're your guards, and uh, we just go alongside with you. Um, oh well, um, it's kind of umming and ahhing. I mean, do you want to push? Do you want to try and plead with him, Bayer? Do you want to try and push this as a plead? I mean, just to get some information as a, a, a way out, uh, like something to to get us out of the city. Um, yeah, I'll try that. Uh, what would I need to do for that? So, uh, when you plead with an NPC who cares what you think, they do, uh, for help, support, or action, all three things apply, you roll with harmony. Uh, harmony, uh, okay. Again, I have a... I'm going to remind you guys, there is a thing called helping, which is when you take appropriate action mm. to help a companion, um, you can basically mark a fatigue to give them a plus one to their roll. So you can take one fatigue in exchange for giving them a plus to their roll. Um, but you have to do it before the roll takes place. Mm. Oh. I want to do help. Dawa? Yeah, I'll help. Yeah. What? So, what does that look like? How does what does Darwa's help look like in this case? Are you just pleading the case with them? Are you? What, what's the plan? I I I just tell it to them straight what's going on. So, okay. I'd let I'd let them know and say if if you help us, you'd be doing an unspeakably good thing. We're trying to stop an invasion up at um oh. Makapu Pass. The, the the Fire Nation are gonna they're gonna set off a volcano. Oh. We need to stop them. Dulong kind of looks Pretty a bit scared, but yeah, I'd say that flat. that counts. So you can, uh, if you take one fatigue there, uh, Dawa, um, and then by you get to add a plus one to your roll. Okay, so I'm now doing this with a plus two. So that makes it a ten. Nice. That makes it a ten. So on a on a plead oh, on a seven rolling. to nine. They need. If this was a seven to nine, they need something more evidence that that is the right course, guidance in making the right choices, or resources to aid them before they act. The GM tells you what they need. On a ten plus, I mean, Darwin just said the volcano is going to blow. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So on a ten plus, they act now and do their best until the situation changes. So this guy's not just going to help you get out of this town. He looks and he's like, an invasion, Mount Makapu. Ah. Uh, uh, Oh, I, I, there's always talk about rebels and resistance, and I've always tried to keep out of it, but if you young kids are willing to do something, uh, I should do the same. All right. We'll say that you're my guards, and you're escorting me to Harbour Town, and I'll, I'll take you as far as I can. Uh, the wagon, it should make your journey a little bit easier. 
come on and he's gonna kind of gesture and yeah like this guy is a hundred percent gonna help you out now like he is utterly convinced by dawa and Baya, uh to, to, nice. to make this like something that he's willing to really go the distance on um so the group cool. of you we get like a cut right he says all of that and then the next thing we see is you guys all maybe wearing sort of like some some just earthbender cloaks like some green cloaks that he's given you um and you're marching alongside his wagon which is pulled by a donkey pig uh you know uh <laughs> merge two animals together get yeah. an avatar animal um <laughs> so it's being pulled by a donkey pig and he's kind of sat on it and you guys are flanking him on either side as as his guards right uh when you approach the big gate to merchant's pier you can see that again there's you, in fact actually no what you see is two different groups arguing with each other they're checking all the wagons but they're constantly bickering you see a group of pirates led by a big burly uh no sh like open shirt um big sort of like kurose gamma like a big sickle on a chain kind of wrapped around the the mid chest um big beefy guy with a bunch of kind of scrawny dirty looking pirates and then opposite them on the other side of the gate is a very very regal looking fire nation woman she wears armor she has a straight sword like a, a chinese straight sword kind of in a sheath at her belt um and she's accompanied by very uh you know loyal looking soldiers and guards and you can hear them arguing as you're approaching um and the pirates are saying like you don't own this town this this place belongs to peony you don't get to make the orders here fire nation you're here as our guests and you're causing trouble um and the woman turns around and says like you pirates are nothing but scum dealing in things that you have stolen no honor or respect the fire nation is here to bring peace and if you really want to mess with us and she just kind of puts a hand on her sword i'd be more than willing to teach you ruffians how a real warrior deals with problems and you can see the tensions are really high as you guys are making your way to the car uh and do long kind of says like just say nothing or just slip on by um, and you see that they go a few of them come over a couple of the pirates is just like what have you got here old man and they go and start looking around he's just like oh oh just just some cabbages and some vegetables taking them to harbor town for trade nothing nothing particularly exciting ah we'll be the judge of that and starts around. who are these kids oh oh these are all my my nephews and grandkids they they're looking after me you know i'm not very good on the road these days <laughs> oh just oh and the pirates don't seem too fussed like they're just like ah whatever but the the, the captain the woman on the guard is kind of eyeing it up That's strange a lot of grandchildren for one such as yourself and some of them well I, some of them don't even look like they're from the earth kingdom uh what do you guys do oh crap <laughs> uh i mean i can <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've got an answer for that. <laughs> In that case, yeah, like uh the captain like while you guys all look at each other, like we get this moment where you're all like, are you gonna say something? Are you gonna like you're all kind of looking you're around? You were told not to say anything. She steps up and she starts like looking more closely, like under the hoods, and I think that she's gonna come up to probably Kehenna. Um, because like the Earth Kingdom, like the Kyoshi kids, like it's the Earth Kingdom, they could be reasonably here. Uh, uh, Melee, Fire Nation, doesn't look too out of place, but the two that she stops in front of is Dawa and Gehenna, and uh, she will draw her sword and she's gonna lift it up as if to like push your hoods back with the sword tip. What do you guys do? Can I? just throw myself on the ground at her feet mm -hmm. and be like oh oh please my in the worst like you know thespian like just doing like the most pauper kind of cockney um orphan accent oh please my lady please we've traveled ever so far uh, with with my family and and uh, we, we we may not look like we're related but we are big family only way to keep warm only way to keep warm in the cold nights oh we need to sell these cabbages so we can get more food and clothes for the little one uh, there's an even littler one back in there somewhere oh please let us okay. through 
that's a thing I could definitely check if this roll goes badly. Uh, okay, is anybody else doing anything? Or because this sounds like a trick I mean, NPC from Mei Lee for sure. Yeah. I think I would help a companion. Sure, how do you help? I throw myself to the side and I'm bowing as well. Like, oh, benevolent Lord, please grant us passage. He keeps falling asleep at the wagon. Uh, we've had so many troubles en route as is. The food is going stale. The little ones. <laughs> yeah, and all that stuff. Sure. Okay. Would you, so you're going to mark a fatigue and give a plus one on this? Right? Yeah, I'll mark a fatigue. All right. Okay. Mark one fatigue. And then mainly this is tricking NPC. So roll with creativity and you get an extra plus one. Creativity. Okay. So I get plus three in total because my creativity is two. Nice. So, Let's hope you go. roll well. Oh, five, six, seven, eight total. Okay. So on a seven to nine, you pick one. So it's the same thing for Trick and NPC. You've got three options. They stumble. Um, they act foolishly. They overcommit. Um. Oh god, I know, I know, I want to try a different option, but I kind of want to overcommit because I don't want to. I don't no, want to no, end up fighting this lady. Happy. She's scary. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's easy. They kind of, and I, I think that the other thing I'm going to say with this, it wasn't a 10, but she's, she's taken aback. Like, she kind of, like, looks at you and, like, groveling, and she's like, please, get up. I'm, and she puts the sword away. None of that. Just because we are here, we are here to bring the, the prosperity and the guidance of the Fire Nation. You do not need to grovel and beg in the, in the dirt. Stand up. Stand with pride. Be on your way, go oh, on. And she just kind of gestures. Thank you, my lady. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. It, almost like you've insulted her honor a little bit. Like she didn't want to be, you know, Ooh. she she wanted to be, you know, there's a respect there kind of thing. Um, and she just kind of gestures you on. Um, and the last thing you hear is, you know, maybe a comment from her, just like, I must go and report to Admiral Carr. The people that attack the docks haven't been found in hours. We need to push on. I'll go and speak with him, and you hear her kind of like making her way off. Um, but yeah, the the wagon trundles out and begins to make its way out of Merchant Pier. Uh, as yeah, this this ruse of Melee's manages to buy you enough time uh, to get out. Uh, whether that how long that's going to last, because uh, she yeah. this this swordswoman, this captain, she definitely noticed something a bit off about Dawa and Kehenna. Like definitely saw that they weren't Fire Fire Nation and Earth Earth, Earth Kingdom, um, but convinced for now at least uh the wagon trundles on and we you know do long begins singing a little song um as you get further and further away but yeah you guys are on the road um what do you guys want to do it's gonna oh, take you at least a day close. or so i almost got shot we almost got discovered this was this could have gone so much better but we're on the way we're out of the town we can finally go and see this new place and try and get some new supplies in a place where people won't recognize us as ship blowing up people. Yeah. Um, yeah, we could soak in the sights of a huge volcano that's about to be overwhelmed by Fire Nation people who are going to be overpowered and destroy not only this village, but they will find the Kyoshi warriors and they'll destroy them too. We should really warn them. Oh, <laughs> okay, okay. A little bit dramatic, but I mean, first things first. We go to the, the volcano, we boil a little bit, it'll burn our skin, and maybe our hair, but we save the no. village. No? No, it's no. It's not very convincing, no Briar. How, how effective is ice um, in small quantities against large quantities of lava? Just uh, asking. Oh, it's terrible. Time. It'll melt instantly. Water is, oh, yeah. 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 Excellent. I can at least keep m my forehead cool if I really want to, though. You know, <laughs> little little Temporary. things. Yes, yes. It's very, very important to protect yourself against heat stroke and and heat exhaustion. By the way, uh, sweetheart, I'll I'll take my thanks for my remarkable acting skills any time now. You know, I I acted. Did you see that performance when we were dealt with the guards? And then and again, my <laughs> accent so so poor wasn't it like you, know, as, you could feel that i was a real urchin you know actually kim this is a good chance i wanted to ask you about this because your archetype the bold um you have a thing called yes. legacy of excellence where you have to pick four things oh. from a big list 
um and when you when you when you achieve them you get to like mark stuff off what are your what are your uh goals your current goals i picked openly outperform an authority figure pull off a ridiculous stunt pet a fantastic beast and travel (laughs) to an incredible place well you know i think that uh, like i mean outperform an authority figure and yeah, a hundred percent. You just did that. Like that would that <laughs> captain was clearly a senior member of like the Fire Nation. So if you want to mark that um, as completed, and when you mark when you fulfill a marked drive, you strike it out. You mark growth, which is XP tracking, by the way. So like that is you get to mark a point of XP cool. basically, um, and uh, or you can clear a condition. But I don't think you currently have any conditions, do you? I don't have any. No. All right. No. So you get to mark a growth. Then. I will. Mark growth. One one Hooray. growth. Excellent. One growth. <clears throat> cool. Um, and Very then nice. yeah, sorry, that was to interrupt. So so <laughs> Melee makes this like I will take my thanks now. Mm-hmm. Sure. <laughs> I clap. <laughs> oh, great job. Thank you. Thank Honestly, you. I was convinced. Thank I felt like I was really part of this guy's family for a second there. <laughs> Very impassioned. Yes. It was very good. Dal was like flipping and running around in the open space, just like having a great time. Like in between <laughs> somersault, she's like, <laughs> like cartwheeling around. Amazing. <laughs> well, you, you can't deny, Bayer, that we've we've managed to get quite an exciting bunch of people to uh, go to a volcano together. I know. This is exactly what I wanted before we go back. To explore the world, see new things, and this place we're now going to? I've heard about it. It's got some amazing things. This is Tom, would you like to use when your, would like your to use stupid that. move? <laughs> I mean, maybe when we get there, uh, or shall I just use it now? Well, so, unless you guys want to, like, have conversations with each other, because, again, like, Avatar's all about, like, those heart-to-heart moments and stuff, mm-hmm. right? Like, if you want to have that, like, I want to talk to Thinny and tell them how cool they are, or how much I'm angry at them for not doing this thing. Um, unless you want to do that, we'll just cut to the village. But before then, I think we should definitely do your little <laughs> uh, otter penguins unagian hot springs <gasps> move that you have. Yeah. <gasps> so... When I visit a new inhabited location that I've learned about in the past, I roll with harmony. Let's do that now, because I might just completely miss this. Uh, I have a harmony of plus one, so I get a nine. Um, So you get to ask one. I get to ask one question. So I'm asking you, Mark, let's see, what do I want to know about this place? What is the special tradition prized by the locals in this place. Oh, God's sake. <laughs> uh, Avatar law fans, forgive me if I don't get this wrong. Um, what is the special, what was it? The famous, the tradition, a special tradition prized by the yes. locals. Yes. Um, it is, uh, it is a, God's sake, Thomas. Um, it is the special uh the the flopping of the fish which is a special uh festival event that takes place where they get a live fish because it's a fishing town and they start it in the upper they take it to the top of the the kind of tiered village and they see which fish will make it back down to the water <laughs> it's like a race and so you have to catch to the you catch a don't. fish and then you take it up to the top, and then you see if it can make it back down to the water. <laughs> it's a, just and if a, it doesn't make it, you have to race. eat it. You have to eat the fish if it doesn't make it. <laughs> okay. It's the it's called the Flopping Fish Festival. <laughs> flopping Fish Festival. <laughs> you asked me it. to make stuff up on the spot. <laughs> this right, is the content fine. you get. Season three I mean, of Avatar, I'm... right here, being written, guys. If you want this idea. Fish. Welcome to have book three. It. So good. I mean, the worst part is I now have to run with it. We simply have to go see the Flopping Fish Festival. <laughs> you won't believe this, but it's the perfect time of year. <laughs> yeah. Really? So yeah, it is literally the Flopping Fish Festival is like today or tomorrow or like, I'd say it's like a whole week long thing. They do it every day for a week and you're it, it just so happens it's this week. You should see how they're just flipping and flapping. They just bounce along the streets, and the ones that make it, we cheer and celebrate. The ones that don't, 
Uh, Greet him. Ren just like <laughs> grips his spear, like white knuckle, like bites it, like trying to restrain himself. It's like, this is what you want to leave Kyoshi Island for. We explore the world to see new sights to flopping fish. The flopping fish festival is talked about the world over. Uh, he just flops back in his seat. Now we're just just a, like that. Doolong says, quick. "Like yes, that's how they that's how they flop." Uh, ah, he keeps flopping around. It also says uh, this move continues. By the way, you and your friends each clear fatigue when we interact with the answers. So if we go to this town and, <laughs> and visit oh. the flopping Floppy fish, fish festival, you, no, you have to interact. You have to participate. Oh, in the oh no! no. <laughs> but if I thought like this means it, this means that you have to come up with the festival the and potentially mechanics around the flopping fish. No, yeah, that. the mechanics also... will be uh, the mechanics will be test your luck, and then that's if your fish wins or not. <laughs> and we also <laughs> we have to we have to I guess catch a competitor and name it and enter it in the no no. Fish so festival. what I would so. Uh, is there any other conversations? Because if not, we're going to arrive in Harbour Town. Sure. Um, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm getting excited no, I'm about good. going to see the Flopping Fish Festival. Uh, so if I'm... anyone wants to interrupt that. So as I'll a be point, honest, like I mentioned earlier... I... Go, go on, maybe. <laughs> I've already got the golden saucer music in my head at this point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mentioned this earlier to Tom, uh, but keep like think of it that like things like your conditions and your balance... All of you are aware of that. So, like, you all have a sense. Tehenna is still a little bit shaken from the fight with the Onyx Juggernaut. You still get the sense that by a, this whole thing about the flopping of the fish kind of is maybe covering up for the fact that they, they feel a bit, like, foolish for how they flub the stealth thing. And they're kind of trying to cover it up with this excitedness about the festival. Um, some of you are, uh, I think, like, Reng... Is looking a little tired like he's looking like you know he's a little bit worn out from everything that's gone on like you guys are aware of your fatigue and your balance and your conditions the whole time um so it, it's something to be aware of that you you are knowledgeable about this stuff um cool in which to assist each other i suppose yeah, yeah so, and that's literally why soothing. it exists so that you can say i'm you know like dawa might be like i want to go and try and cheer Gehenna up i want to try and you know like make her feel better like you can absolutely do that you just need to tell me how you're doing it and, that's, and then we roll I think Reng after uh, several flops around kind of like shakes it off uh, maybe this will do us some good maybe that you know some flop and fish festival is just the thing we need you know just to get past the, the stuff that's happened the stuff that's coming up yeah, fish don't care about what's going on around them. Whether a volcano is going to explode and the Fire Nation are going to attack. They're just fish. Maybe we should just be like fish for a bit. We'll just be okay. fish. Be, be fish. like fish. Be fish. Just swim. Everyone, just go with the I flow. Will... You know? Can I... Um, just take a little bit of water from, like my canteen and mm. just splash it at ring <laughs> i guess that's you to want get it to me be in like character. fish yeah yeah i get it <laughs> that's good <laughs> that's good yeah i'm gonna have to practice my swimming it's like completely like drenched face <laughs> it's just like the just ring out back. like my hair yeah. <laughs> is tied back I think that's a great cut. Uh, we that's the last thing we see, and then uh, we cut the to sort of like the transition. <laughs> the splash transition. Uh, we see you guys arriving early morning. Um, it's been you know about a day or so of traveling on the road with Dulong. Dulong happily to take you, kind of regales you with stories and things like that. But you arrive uh, at Harbour Town. Harbour Town. Um, weirdly it's a village it's not a town uh they probably name themselves uh very ambitiously um it's much more of a small village uh, <laughs> but it's kind of carved into the rock like these hills so it's kind of tiered and it has these stone paths leading up with all the different houses kind of stretching up and it's all built around a small dock a small harbor stone little harbor crafted by um by earthbenders most likely uh looking down you can see the harbor and the dock seem quite busy you don't see a lot of fire nation soldiers here 
you do see some. There are some patrolling. It looks like it is occupied, but there's no heavy military presence here. And you can see why. It's a very small village. It doesn't really seem to have any kind of tactical advantage except for the docks. Um, and that's kind of it. Uh, it's not really a big deal here. Um, Dulong pulls in. He's just like, well, you know, I need to go and make some deliveries. I've, I need to switch things off. But, you know, if there's any other way that I can help, uh, let me know. Like, I, I'm if there's anything I can do, just just ask. You know, uh, but I, I, I wish you good luck uh, in whatever you're doing. Um, Thank you so much, my wonderful friend. And, you know, if the life of being a cabbage merchant, you know, it, it doesn't see it, it doesn't appeal to you anymore. Do apply to the Golden Chrysanthemum Troop. You you do have a natural talent, especially for the cowering. That was wonderful. Perhaps I will. Perhaps I will. And with that, he'll hmm. kind of head off with that ruminating. Bye, Granddad. Uh, <laughs> bye, bye, young, bye, nephew, bye, grandson. Uh, he just kind of waves <laughs> and makes his way. Uh, scattered around this small little fishing village, uh, there are uh, clay statues of fish. Uh, there are banners with little fish, paper, <laughs> pa paper shaped fish uh, strung up. Um, there are people with rods <laughs> walking around. <laughs> like, it is, it's pumping. It's people are hyped. Like, uh, a young boy kind of sees you. He's like, Oh, are you here for the flopping fish festival? <laughs> and is like, Oh, I and am, then chases I off. Am. I'm going to catch the biggest fish. Uh, and then runs down. Um, and it's lively. Look it's it's pretty town. lively. The town seems to be in a good mood. Everyone is so happy, and we get to explore it all. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Let's just go see the town and just be fish. We can be fish. Well, not actually be the fish. Go with we the wanna... flow. Go with the flow. See, because uh, you're a just... fish, and, and the flow the is flow. like the water, and you just go, you have to go with it. You see? I mean, in this festival, it's more go with the flap. But I get what you're saying, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> I'll get us some rods. All right, he starts running off <laughs> to get sure. some rods. <laughs> yeah. All right. So Rang's going off to buy rods and things like that. What about what about everyone else? Like you arrive in this town. I'll probably go down to the dock I'm and like try and like air bend like fish out of the water. Just try and like, suck them I out think... of the water. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think Unless I that's not good. Down. Try and pick a good one. <laughs> He's trying to pick a good... I think I think <laughs> Kahina would go down to the to the docks as well. Um, uh, she would initially probably try to practice a little bit of mm -hmm. water bending, but then seeing Dawa struggle to uh, get a fish might try and help her with water bending to see if she could sure. get some fish. Kind of for working her. together to try and kind of uh kind of do this yeah do you guys like have a conversation about it or is this just sort of like a you guys kind of goof around for a moment and just um do that what kind do you want for the competition so, is it important the kind i i don't know I, what you... I, I feel like bigger is better right so it's try and get a really big one and then maybe really it'll big do, okay, do a okay, huge okay, flop okay. yeah and it'll go big all flops. the way gotcha. yeah 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 Gotcha. So try and get the okay. biggest one we can. I think okay. Baya will want a, a fish as well. Should we get one that like an equal size? I don't know. We, I'll try. Oh. I'll try. <laughs> we can, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's try. Let's let's get as, as big a one as we can. All right. What if we get a whale? So we see the two of you kind of working together <laughs> to try and grab these fish, uh, whilst Reng is like <laughs> running around chasing rods and stuff. What about Baya and Melee? What about you two? I've got an idea of something I want to do if, when everybody has left, so whatever Melee is doing. Okay, sure. Uh, yeah. I'm just checking um, who's got conditions. So it's Rang and, uh, and uh, Rang Kahina. Kahina and... Oh, I think, uh, yeah, I've got one as well. Yes. Okay. I am foolish. Yes, Baya has foolish, yeah. In fact, okay. I think it's just Baya and Kahina now, I think. I've got okay, afraid. Uh, I was just. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's not showing up on mine. So yeah, Rang's got afraid as well. Uh, okay. Um. 
I think, uh, to be honest, I'll I'll go and uh, join the ladies down um, with what they're doing because I think I think Maylee's never going to be too far from Dawa, especially because you know um, she's always going to kind of keep a little eye on her, not not in a bad way, but in a just making sure you're okay um, sort of way. Um, so yeah, I'll be I'll be helping. Uh, I'll be I'll be kind of joining in with the shenanigans. But I think as well, part of it, um, Maylee would just be sort of sliding in little kind of positive reinforcements to Kahina being like, you know, you're really skilled at that. The, the, the delicacy and the precision of your waterbending is absolutely, uh, it's a delight to watch. Sure. Uh, that is obviously a comfort and support. Uh, so I'd like you to roll with harmony, please, Maylee. Harmony. And harmony. Uh, again, Dawa, if you would like, Kahina can't help with this, but Dawa, if you wanted to, you could take a fatigue to help Melee, if you wanted to. Yeah, I could, I could do that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Did so I you get another plus one to that uh, yeah. if um, if Dawa takes okay. a minus uh, takes an extra fatigue. Okay, that's a ten then. All right, ten. Okay, so on a ten, uh, so on a comfort and support, on a hit, uh, the well, first things first, Kahina needs to decide. Kahina needs to decide if they open up to you or not. So it's up to Katie to decide. Does this comfort, are these little kind of compliments and reinforcements, do they reach Dina? Does she want to respond? I think she would, but I think she would probably spend some time talking to Melee about the attack that she saw happen and why mm. well, her adversary is such a big threat. Yeah, we're going to get to that because, so if you do, if you open up to it, what happens is Melee, because you got a 10, you can ask uh, a question to Kahina, and Kahina, because you because you got a ten, Kahina can ask you a question. Um, anybody who answers honestly can choose to clear a condition or up to two fatigue. So you can ask each other a question, and you can choose to clear a condition or, or basically heal uh, from this. But you have to answer it honestly, and it can be any question. But obviously, you want to have one targeted, like you know, maybe mainly this is the point where you've been kind of dropping these things in, but maybe you say, "Hey, what's you know, what are you so afraid of? Like, what's got you on edge? Mm, you know, yeah. what 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 what, what yeah. was it about that warrior? That warrior really seemed to get under your skin. Why?" And then Kahina, mm. you can then ask a question back related to that, like you know do you think I can beat him? Like, I, you know, I don't think, you know, whatever it happens to be. So I, I threw this back to you guys now, so. Mm. I think definitely given the context of the situation and kind of everything that's happened today, um, my question mm. would definitely be like, you know, I, I noticed, my love, that after we saw that uh, Onyx juggernaut, you seemed a bit shaken. Are you all right? Why, why did he, why were you so shaken by you? I've seen you take, and, take, take far more fearsome warriors. There's something different about him. He... I've seen a whole village up in flames because of that one person. And... Oh. There weren't enough waterbenders there to help. And I couldn't help. I, w I was young at the time. It, it gave me drive to learn and to... To teach myself to get taught by others to improve but he's caused a lot of devastation and in that fight back there i couldn't i couldn't touch him i i, I just wasn't powerful enough okay mm. so kahina now you can ask a question back to may lee what do you think that i should do what do you think i can how can I improve to beat him? That is a rather tricky one. I would honestly say... I once heard something. While it is always best to believe in oneself, a little help from others can be a great blessing. I, I believe that you are strong enough. But know that we are always here as well to help you and together i think we can take him down well i think that's Thank both you. very honest from both of you um so yeah if you want to clear afraid kahina and then melee you can clear up to two fatigue because you don't have any conditions Hooray. lovely what a lovely little moment what a lovely moment 
listen. And then, and, and Dawa, you're obviously there. Like you were kind of encouraging mm. with the compliments, but you hear all the conversation and stuff, and just kind of, you know, yeah. you get to kind of see it kind of take place. Yeah, I sympathize greatly with Kahina in that moment. Mm. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, I think it's just, yeah, the, you can see Kahina is obviously much more determined to fight back, whereas yours was more of a kind of like, you've come to an understanding of like, well, maybe fighting isn't always the best answer, but, you know, she's got to kind of follow her own path kind of thing. Mm. Um, all right, Baya, everyone, you're on your own. Yeah, so uh, now that everyone has kind of gone off and I've sort of outwardly been showing this excitement for this flopping fish festival and trying to get everyone not necessarily distracted but gives them something to look forward to for the day i think mm. like they're heading off i'm smiling everyone is doing their own thing and that's kind of then replaced by because at the moment i'm feeling stupid and foolish and mm. i guess in in this sense it's kind of slipping more into like the insecure of like should have taken this guy down. The operation should have been a lot easier. We should have been able to get out of this town. I'm not the warrior I meant to be. Um, but like when everyone dips away, maybe I go off in some alleyway somewhere or find something, some area, some serene area where I kind of breathe, find my center, not in the balance sense, but mm. and then start like I pull the fans and start like hitting the air in all these different poses and just trying to train these these poses and these actions to find myself as a warrior again, right? Like, a lot of dumb stuff has happened. Mm. I want, I, I'm trying to, you know, just do these actions and these movements to be a warrior again. Uh, mm. Maybe that there's like a tree or some wooden support somewhere and like some of them clip into that and start taking chunks out of that or something um but something to try and yeah send to myself to get myself back to some normality in a kiyoshi mm. sense in a very isolationist way where mm. you know i can sort the problems out myself sure why not <laughs> yeah is there is there was there an idea that you had that something you wanted to get from this like is this to try and clear the condition or is this more like just a this is what your character would do like you just take this kind of quiet moment away i think even if it doesn't clear the condition i just mm. like the idea of that that's what the character is doing yeah i think uh, so because it, it, it's the clear the condition is you have to do right? something foolhardy um and i don't think this is foolhardy. yeah i know it's quite you know, focused um, and stuff so I, yeah i don't I think, think i'm that, necessarily yeah, just a nice moment. to clear it yeah it's just yeah. also like i know i'm trying to distract myself with this flopping fish festival or whatever mm. some fun thing to do i know there's also a big fight incoming like everyone has been talking about going to this volcano yeah it's not that i'm deflecting that idea when i go for other things that is setting deep sure. in my mind this is how i'm sort of mentally preparing for it in this uh in this sort of kyoshi warrior way i suppose cool all right that's awesome lovely little scene to kind of cut things uh to kind of again to put it together you all participate in the Flopping Fish Festival. You do not need to roll. Uh, thanks to your... Go on, Reng. Soy, go on. You know when I went away to get fishing rods and stuff like that? Yeah. Uh, there was a fishing rod vendor, like, way ahead, but just before it that caught my eye, merchandise. And behind, in front of that, like, some stupid little, like, throw a, like, a penny at coconuts or whatever There's to like knock them off. and stuff, yeah. I end up with loads of, like, novelty merchandise of this fishing festival for everybody perfect. instead of rods. Okay, perfect. Um, luckily, so so you kind of all gather to try and participate in this festival, and Rain turns up with all this merchandise, none of which is, like, anything that's going to help you catch fish, but Dawa and Kahina have been practicing this, like, air-bending, water-bending technique where you they managed to basically do it without the rods. Um you lift you the water and team. suck the fish out. <laughs> yeah, like they, they kind of like, yeah, basically like lift the water and then suck it into the, into Dawa's hands. Um, and the group of you enter as a team. You manage to get this big fish. You run up to the top of the thing and you put it down and it begins flopping its way down the whole thing. Um, you all participate in the festival, which means you can all clear one fatigue um, right off the bat. 
thanks to uh, Bayer's uh, knowledge about this festival that was going on. Um, sure. And yeah, you, you, <laughs> you complete this this little moment. When the festival is coming to an end, like we get like a montage of you, the fish flopping. At one point it stops and you're all there like, come on, come on, come on. And then it starts <laughs> flopping again and it gets down to the docks and things like that. Um, <laughs> At the end of the festival, uh, there's this big kind of celebration. Um, the mayor of the town actually comes out and uh, kind of addresses everyone. He's like, oh, yes, thank you, everyone, for coming uh, to the Flopping Fish Festival once again. It has been marvelous. Uh, we are very truly blessed that Harbour Town has avoided these these terrible conflicts with the Fire Nation. And we are very pleased to have uh, our own garrison here who is looking after us and protecting us and allowing us to continue in our business. And he gestures to all the guards and things like that. Um, it, it has come to my attention that there are some in the mountains and in, and in the cities who are opposed to this glorious new rule of the Fire Nation. Uh, and one such individual has been found here in Harbour Town. Um, he, and they bring out a boy, no, probably about your age. He's like a teenager in wooden stocks, and he's being held off the ground like in this kind of wooden contraption. Um, he was caught trying to steal our supplies uh, and disrupt uh, the glorious work of the Fire Nation garrison here. He will be sent to the new stronghold they are building in the valley to be to to be imprisoned and arrested as is appropriate. And let this be a reminder that we are here to to work with the Fire Nation and not to oppose them. And most of the town are like, "Here, here, Mayor! Yes, well said, well said!" And they're kind of cheering along. Um, and you see, this boy is kind of like he's like struggling against the the chains and things like that. He will be sent with the with the late garrison to the new stronghold. And let this be a lesson to everyone. And it kind of goes around. Um, and they begin to take this boy away. You can see them kind of maybe like a, a guard barracks or something on the edge of town. Um, they begin wheeling him towards that. Um, and you will kind of see this uh, from the crowd of the Flopping Fish Festival. Um, also, as you guys took the time to participate in the Flopping Fish Festival, uh, I had a secret clock uh, and as you have delayed oh, no. in heading off oh, towards no. the volcano, and also this has given your pursuers a chance to make ground, uh, and we see this, you, the characters don't see this, but the audience, we cut, and we see Captain Jang, who is the captain, the swordswoman at the front gate, uh, with a force of Fire Nation warriors, um, and a accompanying her, a big earthbender mercenary clad in black volcanic armor, I thought that that was them. They wouldn't have gotten too far, even with that wagon. Let's go. We need to catch up with them. And they begin to march out, and you can see them on like sort of like uh, steam-powered wagons and things like that. They begin making their way towards Harbour Town from uh, Merchant's Pier, and they are in pursuit. Um, and I'm not going to tell you how many more pips, more little ticks on the clock it will take, uh, but having spent the time to in enjoy the festival, uh, the clock is now ticking. But now there is a new problem. Uh, there is this young boy, um, and I think that actually, as we, we cut back, the young boy, as he's being pulled away, the young boy calls out, he's like, you cowards, all of you, the Fire Nation aren't our friends, they're killers, they're, they're here to destroy our homes and take away our families, you need to fight, why won't you fight, you cowards, and he's being called away, and then like one of the Fire Nation guards comes up, and, be quiet boy, <laughs> slaps him around the face, um, and they put like a, a gag over his mouth as they begin pulling him away towards the barracks. So, so sorry. The the pursuing thing was that something that we saw the people pursuing us, or yeah. was that like a cutaway to them? Okay, cool. That's like the old. Um, yeah, we, the, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. We see that, and you as players get to see it, but your characters have no don't. idea. Can All I, right, uh, um, as, as Ring, I'm wearing this huge helmet essentially, which is a fish that's like front on. I'm looking out the out the mouth, <laughs> like a circle. <laughs> this isn't right. Fire, we gotta do something about this. I can't believe this town is under so much control. We have to get this guy out of here. We, he can't go to the prison up in the encampment. I don't know what they'll do to that him. Poor kid. Guys, come on, we gotta do something. Yeah, we've gotta help him. This this isn't right. Fire Nation kidnapping t young kids? For what? Trying to feed themselves? That's not right. 
I agree. Are you guys having this conversation like in where the festival is taking place? I mean, it's it's a whispered sort of conversation. Okay. Hey. That's yeah. Sure. Hey. Yeah. We're stage whispering. I have no to one point else can hear my mouth at the everyone first else one can. I'm speaking to. Yeah. <laughs> of the fish. Yeah. It's a giant sort of like carved fish head that Reng is now wearing. Yeah. All right, let's Perfect. let's let's follow the guards. We need to release this this prisoner. Sure. Cool. Are you just going to blindly just going to directly follow them right now? You're just going to follow where they're taking them to yeah, the think. Yeah, festival in our case we need is supplies. over. We need supplies yeah. first. If we take care of this before we get the supplies that we need to continue, then we're going to have to run from this town too. Let's Darla get some supplies. Lifts up a giant fish. Mm. <laughs> That's one. I, I can grill that. <laughs> I, I, could, I could grill that for you. That is one. Or oh, smoke Jihina it. Is, is correct. That is one fish <laughs> that will not feed you all for multiple days. Let's get some supplies and then free the, free him and get out. Huh? Okay, but we can't sure. take too long. I've got some sweets, by the way. I got it from that stand over there. That counts as two. Ooh. I'll eat the sweets. <laughs> We really right. should have gotten some cabbages from that cabbage merchant. Oh well. Wait a minute. I have a bag of bread. <laughs> that counts as seven. <laughs> do you um so what's the plan here? Like, yeah, do you want to spend time looking for supplies? Are you just gonna go straight so you can see that whilst I this don't. town isn't heavily occupied, there's still like a good like squadron of Fire Nation soldiers. And they're clearly like you know, they have this barracks, they've got this prisoner in there, this young boy, like you don't know how many you don't know exactly how many fire nation soldiers there are here you don't know you know mm. it, are there any firebenders you don't know you've just seen soldiers mm. do we have any money um i think the song your kind of resistance leader would have given you some money enough to buy okay. supplies the supplies will take you time you'll have to go around and shop around and stuff like that um so that will take some time but the you, i'd say you have enough money to buy enough supplies to complete your journey but not much more you don't really have like bartering money you have like okay. enough money to buy what you need um, Rang has spent his share on merchandise in that case you have not enough money <laughs> <laughs> a bag of sweets spent, like, is a it? good chunk right. of your money on fish flopping fish merchandise right, which I, did I think we win is anything? Did, did we win anything in the flopping fish festival uh you won applause and, it's a um, celebration of joy and love. Oh, I love. do love applause. Yeah. Yeah. I live for the applause. I mean, one a fish. Well, it, yeah, if your fish didn't reach, if your fish is in Rawa's, Dawa's hands, it didn't reach the, the sea, so you didn't win. <laughs> it did oh, not did flop its way into the water. Else's fish? <laughs> oh, you've snicked someone else's <laughs> fish, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, uh, I, I am all for going after this guy sooner rather than later, uh, right. finding out exactly where he's kept uh, before we just, you know, he goes into like some super heavily guarded prison somewhere before his uh, journey up to the pass. So mm -hmm. I don't well, really want to do The other thing I'm going to say is don't forget, you guys can call on each other's balance principles. So <clears throat> for example, here by a, if you wanted to try and convince Kahina to like, no, we need to go and save this guy now, and we need your strength to do it. Like, I need, we need you to come and, and fight the Fire Nation. You could try yeah. and, um, uh, you could try and call out Kahina's force, which is one of her sides of balance. She has care and force, um, and you're basically um... calling them out to try and live up to that that experience. Vice versa, um. You know, I mean, Bayer's, uh, you know, whole thing is, is you know, somebody could, like, for example, Reng, you could basically be like, no, Bayer, we need to, we need to focus, like, we can't get caught up in another thing, like, you, we need to do this so we can get back home, um, and try and call upon, for example, Bayer's role as, as you know, as an icon to, to be like, no, we, this is, although actually, I think your, I, the whole Kyosha Warrior thing is to try and, protect people right isn't it like, yeah, ex yeah that's, that's the thing um, yeah, I feel like that'd be the other my, way around my tradition involves providing aid and succor to the downtrodden and 
and yeah. all of these different things and also never running from a fight but also at the same time never intervening without being asked to so <laughs> mm. um but i mean i i feel like we have to rescue this person uh so actually i'm gonna call on dawa instead oh uh, because at the moment their balance is shifted towards action uh mm -hmm. rather than forgiveness so I'll be saying, yeah, we we have to go save this person right now. Before we know it, he'll be in the forces of the Fire Nation, and we can't do anything. He'll be in exactly. some courier transport, and in the middle of the, the pass, and we'll, there'll be no way we can save him. Who knows what they'll do to him? They, All right. <laughs> they're merciless. All right. Well, if by if you're actually going to call out Dawa's uh, action, I mean, uh, seems like Dawa's actually agreeing with me. <laughs> It is, but so so. Well, here's the thing, right? So when I was reading up on this, um, uh, you can basically uh, la, 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 la. when you openly call on someone to live up to their principle, um, uh, shift your balance away from the center, the name and role with their principle. Um, this is where I have to wrap my head around it because these are all like new mechanics. On a hit, they are called to act as you say. They must either do it or mark a condition. On a seven to nine, they challenge your view. I guess the way to think of it is just because Dalwa agrees doesn't mean you you can't not call them out. You, you're just kind of encouraging them, right? This is you kind of saying like, yeah, we need to go and do this right now. We, we both agree. Um, yeah. So yeah, so I think that you, so you roll, Tom, that you roll okay. with Dalwa's uh, plus one because her action is shifted to a plus one action. So you're trying to encourage her action basically. So you're going to roll 2d6 yeah. plus one. Plus one. Is and it... no, is there any harmony or anything else like that? Or Nope, nope. It's just, just, plus, it's just okay. plus, their, plus their action on this. Okay. Uh, in that case, I get a nine. Okay. So on a seven to nine, um, so first of all, it was a success. So Rhiannon, uh, you huh? basically, I'm assuming you are just going to be like, yeah, absolutely. Let's go and save him right now. Like, I agree. Let's go. Well, because right? would... her balance is shifted towards action. She's, yeah, she's in that mindset. Like, she's, sure. she wants to help. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So you, so you agree. So you don't need to mark a condition. You're going to do as Baya says. You're going to basically immediately try and rescue this guy. On a seven to nine. Um, ah, interesting. So, <laughs> so you dawa now get a chance uh you can challenge um uh buyer's world view as well um so and then buyer you either mark a fatigue or dawa gets to move shift your balance as well ah okay so well, so my, my, my balance at the moment balance. is dead center yeah. So right. buyer's two options is roll, which is to be a Kyoshi warrior, which is to protect and to help and to, you know, aid people or freedom, mm. which is to not do that, to do whatever buyer wants. So you would be shifting them if you were like, you could basically shift them to say like the same thing, like you're encouraging yeah. them back, right? The, the, yeah, the way you this are works is like warrior you're egging each things. other on like, yeah. yeah, 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 we need to go and do this, right? Yeah. Is yeah, that what you, like, and that's yeah. what you think would go? Yeah, but you, yeah, you're a Kyoshi warrior. Like, this is this is what you're made to do. This is what we're made to do. Okay. Let's help. Them. Right. So both of you move your uh, so your balances. So you're going to move one towards action, uh, mm -hmm. Dawa, and then Baya, you're going to move one towards roll. And that's where cool. we're going to kind of shift those two things. Um, yeah, cool. Uh, and I think that with that, so and and you guys. It was like immediate. So these two just start making their way towards the barracks. Like whatever other things they were thinking of doing, these two are like, we are going to go help that person now. And they are going. I think uh, Reng turns to Kahina and Melee. It's like, we should really do something now. Maybe we should start marching right up there right now. Right, Bayer? What, turns like those around. two are? Oh. <laughs> and then, yeah, we start. Well, I at least would start jogging sure. after them. Mm -hmm. All right. With a bouncing Where fish Where she goes, on. I go. <laughs> yeah, cool. <laughs> well, with that, with these two kind of leading the charge and, and encouraging each other to go and be big big heroes, uh, that's where we're going to end this uh, first episode. And we will be back. Oh! We're not finished. We're not fully finished. So when we mm. end a session, uh, every session, we have a thing called oh, personal yeah. growth. Mm. Um, oh. So... Uh,
at the end of each session, each player answers the following questions. Did you learn something challenging, exciting, or complicated about the world? What do we think to that? Hmm. I'm not really sure. I, I mean, like I, it, I guess it depends on our knowledge, right? Uh, yeah, I, th I feel like... I think I... of it as a character. This is as your character, not as you right. as people. Do you want to go around then, Mark, and do individuals? Sure. Well, it's, it's also a group discussion, right? So, like, okay. so, 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 Meili, do you think that you learnt something challenging, exciting, or complicated about the world as your character? Or is this pretty much um, like... I... Does finding out the volcano is going to blow up, does that count? Or is that like pre-session set up, really? You know what? For the sake of, for the sake of it being a two-shot episode, let's say yes. Mm. Let's say that learning that a uh, volcano, that this cunning admiral is going to blow up a volcano and you're the only ones who can stop it, let's say that's a yes. Mm. So that means everybody then um... can mark it as a growth. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, I was going to say, like, learning about Kahina's experience with the Onyx Juggernaut is probably, um, you know, learning that, like, this that's Onyx actually, Juggernaut. That's yeah, actually, that would be a like, perfect one. Yeah. You learn about Kahina's yeah. experience with it, for sure. Um, I think also seeing, yeah. like, the mayor as well, who's just like, oh, yep, the Fire Nation, they, they just, they, they're welcome here. That sort yeah. of thing, that, mm. that very yeah, they, quick you, turn heel yeah. from a Earth and Kingdom. It's also kind of an interesting village. question, like, why have they done that? Like, that's in like, why would they just give up like so easily like that? Why are they just mm. welcoming in this advancing army? Um, yeah. All right. So the next question. So everybody can mark one growth. The next Ooh. question is, did you stop a dangerous threat or solve a community problem? My my gut is no, not yet. No, that was all in the pre-episode yeah, stuff, I think. we were exactly. just trying to save yeah. our own hides and get out. And so. escape. But if you do save this boy or you do stop the volcano, that would 100% yeah. be a yes, right? Yeah, For yeah. this one, it's a no. Um, did you guide a companion towards balance or end the session at your center? Um so this oh. is that you brought them <laughs> to the center rather than drifting apart. So for I, Tom and well, Tom and Dower, that's a no. <laughs> yeah, I moved her away and you moved me one away. I was at center the entire episode until that last action. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So I think that for everybody else, I don't think you guys did too much of that. And again, that's because we're still in that system, but that's also going to be a no. Um, but each of you on your character sheets also have a <laughs> like your own growth questions. It's on the second sheet of your full character sheet. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, we'll start with uh, Kim. Do you have that up? Do you want to read out your, your growth <laughs> question? I have... Did you express vulnerability by admitting you were wrong or that you should have listened to someone who uh, you ignored? And I think I did the exact opposite of that and gloated <laughs> and bossy. gloated and gloated yep. and did my own thing. Yep. <laughs> so Absolutely. no. Absolutely. <laughs> so no. All right. Perfect. Uh, Rang, Trot, what's your growth question? Uh, did you pursue a desire or goal of your own outside of protecting others? I think I just maintained my protective element of buyer. Uh, yep. And I think the fishing, flopping fish thing is not about protection or a desire. No. Uh, it's no, a temporary it measure. A thing to do. Yeah. All right. So, no. Uh, who's this? Uh, the icon, buyer, Tom. Uh, so my growth question is, did I accomplish a feat worthy of my burden and tradition? Uh, and among my responsibilities and prohibitions, um, I don't think I actually hit any of those. I think I will next Not time, yet. in which in which yeah. case it's never run from a fight. Never fall in love is one of them as well. Hmm, anyway. Oh my! Uh, <laughs> oh but, my! Um, oh I didn't my. didn't this episode no, so right. not for me. Okay. Uh, Re the idealist. What's your growth question? You got it there. Mm. Did you improve the lives of a community of average citizens? Did you? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you stole a fish and blew up a cabbage cart. We blew up a load of Fire Nation ships at the start. Would that have improved? <laughs> I, don't I, don't really think, I don't think so. No, I don't think you improved no. it just yet. I don't think we, right. don't think we have yet. <laughs> okay. And then, uh, Katie, what's your growth question for the hammer? Uh, did you make progress towards your goal against your adversary? I don't think you did. Yeah, didn't get didn't get a chance to fight him just yet. But again, I think a lot of those things you will get to do in the second episode. Yes. Um, yeah. Did anybody mark three growth? I think you all just got the one, right? Apart from Kim, who got two. Yeah. 
All right. So when you get three, when you have three growth boxes ticked, you basically get an advancement, which is kind of like leveling up. You get to pick a new ability or you get to like improve a stat. You get to do a bunch of stuff. And you're, it is meant to take a bit of time for you to get these. Like you're supposed to do it in like two or three sessions. So um, don't worry too much about not getting all of those. But cool. Uh, with that, that is going to be the end of the session. Thank you guys so much for joining us for part one of Avatar Legends, the role-playing game. Um, thank you very much again to Magpie Games for sponsoring this. Thank you, all of you, for coming and checking it out. Uh, we hope that people enjoyed it. We know it's a different system. There's a lot of different mechanics. I'm sure that some of you are like, oh, wow, it looks amazing, but I couldn't follow it. You should go and check out the quick start rules, read up on it. Um, yes. It is yeah. very, very fun. It's very narrative. As you could see, there's a lot of kind of conversation. It's less kind of DM yeah. besides everything and more like, how do we feel? What's this? What, what, this would be cool, wouldn't it? And then I was a lot less stuff. confused yeah. than I expected to be, I think. Mm. It felt a lot more yeah. flowing, which yeah. is nice. Yeah, I think it's something that, again, with practice, stuff like the balance pushing and pulling, that's something that I'm still getting used to. It's something we're all still getting used to. But that little bit at the end of like showing it doesn't have to be just because somebody opposes. Like You can encourage each other to be that like, shift. yeah, we should go and do this. Yeah. And then this you go cool. off yeah. and go and do it, right? Like, like that. It's that kind of stuff. Um, cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> apparently chat is saying that they would watch a full campaign or fail specifically said I'd watch a full campaign of this <laughs> we can officially write season 3 so there you go wow. <laughs> yeah let's do it um, cool. alright yeah hey when does the kickstarter launch kickstarter launches next week I've got to get my notes up again Tom uh, kickstarter launches 3pm UK time 3pm uh, yeah. UK time 10am yeah. eastern time um, on August yes. 3rd, Tuesday, August 3rd. So it will be up when we do our next session next Thursday. Right. Um, next so Thursday, sure 8 p.m., same time. There you go. Yeah, yeah, use, our link, episode. use our link to sign up for the Quick Start rules and the mm -hmm. yeah. Kickstarter notification as well. Um, and it it go might and, be go good to like have a little skim just so you know how this is working for our next session. It might be easier yeah. to follow along. So Yeah, and it's also yeah, like, man, it's play. it's... It's free RPG rules. You could download those quick start rules and play this with your own mates. Like, you know, yeah, and like try. We, we've kind of shown here, you just need 2d6 and a character sheet. That's it. You, you yeah. don't, you can just run it on like, roll, you know, roll 20 or whatever you want to use. Yeah. Um, very, very easy to do. Cool. Well, yeah. thank you very much, everybody. Um, I think any donations and stuff, what we might do is read them out on Sunday. So we'll include yes. those with our, with our Sunday uh, high roller stuff um, rather than doing yes. it now. Because thank you very much, everyone. Stream. Thank you very much. If you subbed or if you Thank donated, you. Um, we will read that out next time. Thank you very much, everybody. Good night, and we will see you all on Sunday and then next Thursday for more Avatar Legends. Woo! Woo! Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.